Icewind Dale has become trapped in a perpetual winter. Ferocious blizzards make the mountain pass through the spine of the world exceedingly treacherous. And this land has not felt the warmth of the sun in over two years. In fact, the sun no longer appears over the mountains, not even what should be the height of summer. In this frozen tundra, darkness and bitter cold reign as king and queen. Dale folk live in a scattering of settlements known as Ten Towns. Most residents blame Arl the Frost Maiden, the god of winter's wrath. The shimmering aurora that weaves across the sky each night is said to be her doing, a potent spell that keeps the sun at bay. Although each town has resolved to appease the Frost Maiden, with sacrifices of one kind or another. No respite from winter's fury seems forthcoming. The caravans come from the south and travel between settlements in this never-ending winter and has left everyone feeling isolated. Ten Towns is a place to test one's mettle, and in the spirit of heroes, who have come before, leave one's mark on this frigid land. God damn it. You're excellent way to start. Yeah. I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> Always double tap. That's what Arudai does on <laughs> his butthole. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. How do I get rid of her? How do I get rid of her? You want to get rid of me? I can leave. It's fine. Oh. No, please Again, don't. Please we, don't. me and we'll... I keep offering you exorcisms, but you never take them. <laughs> I do need the exorcisms. Uh, and, yeah, don't go extra. We'll, we'll, we'll lose some people if you do that. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not even showing boobs, though. That's, you know. They're all I mean, here for disproof. You are welcome yeah, to change that boobs. strategy anytime you would like, X-Ray Girl. Um, hello, hello. Wow, holy, holy shit. shit. That gate. came in hot. Uh, thank you, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming, for that That's $100. What I said. <laughs> Literally. 
Did you have your coffee this morning? What is going on, <laughs> X-Ray Girl? <laughs> she has been roasting me backstage just like entire time. No, I've been playing Breath of the Wild the entire time. That is how wired you are? You didn't Most even realize asking. while you were playing that game that you were also roasting me. Like you had two channels going. Damn. Yes. It's like an auction in Gradius. It just, just happens autonomically. It, the, it, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're just lucky I didn't use gamer words, okay? Wow, we. <laughs> uh, we were getting there. We were getting there. I know. Breath it, no, of the yeah. Wild gets you there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah, I still can't play this Real game. Real gamer. <laughs> Gamers? Oh my god, how many times have I done one shrine that it just takes forever and ever and ever trying to do the same thing over again? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, Dragon Soup Gaming, thank you for your $100 super chat. Um, I will I will do my best on that. Um, I cannot make any promises. He's a very busy person. Um but hey, who knows? Quarter Black might make an appearance on this channel here in the near future. Something to consider. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll read that again and talk about it at the end of the stream. I normally don't do the super chats during this, but that just came in so fast and, and so, so uh, early. Fast and um, hard. Fast mm -hmm. and hard, as they came. say, just like this wow. show, uh, which is Secrets yeah. of the Frost Maiden. If you uh, are here for the first time, welcome. I am Arudai, your roguish, daring, dashing, handsome, lovable, and all around beloved dungeon master. And uh, I'm glad to have you here. We're playing fifth edition of DD. &D. Not everybody's favorite, but we got a wonderful the crew to us. make it to make it worth your while. Well, most of them. Most of them. We, we do have two black boxes today, comics and Epic Mike, um, we're having some some memories back to the summer of love, and they really wanted to uh, relive that summer. Uh, so they decided to be black boxes today while the rest of us play the game. Um, so let's go around and say hello to those people who actually showed up today, uh, starting up with the permanent black box himself, Bill Stranger. What is going on, sir? <laughs> I was about to mention how you somehow make that sound like a racial slur, but there we go. You've got to like the fact. QED, I suppose. <laughs> uh, everything, apart from that, everything's been going. So we play on, I am jonesing for some D&D, I really must say. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm happy to go in here and get some, and get some skulls cracked. Oh. Well, let's get to some skull cracking then. Um... Very glad to have you here. Always a pleasure, Bill. Uh, someone who also commonly says, always a pleasure, Bill. We've got Aiden. What is going on? <laughs> uh, not much. Uh, just, yeah, getting ready for Vegas stuff and trying to make sure that my laptop can actually edit stuff so I can uh, work while I'm there. But yeah, be pretty cool. Uh, four days. Let's go. Till at least I leave. Hey, let's go. Man, I'm jealous. I wish I could be there. He's at last. I wish I could be there. Oh, man. I, I like how literally every description for myself has been put in quotes in chat as if they're mocking me, <laughs> but it's not true. <laughs> you know, wow. There's, there's That's fucking teamwork right there. <laughs> when I was dating, there was something back then when someone describes themselves with words similar to yourself, it just makes me go, <laughs> they're full of it. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> when I launch the show, I trigger your gag reflex. Interesting. That's uh, that's interesting to note. Someone else <laughs> who knows a thing or two about triggering his gag reflex. We've got Disparu. What's going on, man? You can't. doesn't work when you set yourself up for an insult. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one with your head down. I'm this one down. I'm going for it. I'm the one that's going to trigger this. Um... <laughs> Not the gag reflex. Well, I thought you were going to say something like someone who doesn't have uh, a gag <laughs> reflex from experience. No, hey, that well, would no, be good I, too. Damn. I know. Wow. You're welcome. Let's, Thank let's you. Let's be fair, Disfree. You did have your head down at the time. So you he could did. Kind of <laughs> uh, an easy target. Uh, but yeah, spent the week wiping out Terminids and Automatons. Um, we're on the final push to wipe them out permanently from the galaxy for freedom. So um, always a good week. Democracy. Democracy. Leave some for me. I'm waiting for Windows 10 to install. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> you're so adorable. <laughs> I'm, I'm going out. I'm essentially like on the hell live of the guys who's got like a, like a whiffle bat and like gaffer taped on bin bags for armor. <clears throat> Bill, you oh, can wow. use my computer while I'm gone. I'll be gone for a month. So. 
That's true. Sounds like it's time for some democracy, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you come back like you're level 150. <laughs> Rank private. Oh, wow. We got a whole bunch brain, of bro. gifted memberships. Thank you. Who did that? Dragon Noodle uh, Soup. Dragon Noodle oh, Soup thank Gaming. You. Thank yeah. you for rare memberships at that. Ten of them. Thank you. Well, that's a lot of rare individuals that's, joining that's the fellowship today. Really appreciate that. That was very kind of you. Um, look at that support. And he bought me a hot dog. Well, that's incredible. You have to do um, it like the NPCs, though. Yeah, you got to do it. Do the uh, eat the glizzy. <laughs> you know, where she's like the long way. Um, like yep. that. The, the NPCs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna clip that, please. No, no, <laughs> do not. It's too late. It's already happened. Ever. God damn it. You're welcome, chat. <laughs> you know, speaking of someone who promised me she'd come on and do an NPC stream, uh, X-ray girl, what's going on? I never promised that. Yeah, you did. You said it. I'm live on stream once, and I'm gonna hold you to it. Oh, uh, unless you can produce the receipts, yeah, I don't first. remember this. Yeah. Oh, you must have been. You are devious, so I don't know. That day. I was drunk. You're saying? Yeah, deep in your cups. Uh, deep in your cups. Deep I was in on the cups, drink. I think. People yeah. say, yeah, <laughs> probably. But d you can't hold me to that. That's not a, a law-abiding contract. So. I don't you know, know the laws in Canada, but it, it, it is actually. <laughs> you is you it? can't sign things drunk and get away with it. So well, there was no actual signature. A verbal contract is not the same. They consider well, it in America. It is. It is in if it's America. recorded. Well, I'm in Canada, so suck it. <laughs> wow, wow. That glizzy, I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited for D and D, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. Oh yeah. Oh man, they they are clipping it. I hate all of you. Um, <laughs> you all right. gonna happen. Love you, chat. I, yeah. I should have known. I should have known. Well, we're gonna start off with some nice stuff for you. Well, actually, first, I, I'm gonna start off with an apology. I, I don't have uh, the uh, encounter that I suggested last time this week, so the party is going to be uh, spared the Yeti encounter this week. I uh, had to take over the editing uh, this week because uh, uh, Sev's got overwhelmed with some things, so I wasn't able to throw that together for you, but. We'll have that next week for you. Uh, so next week, come prepared for a tiered fight with a Yeti encounter. Uh, this you mean week in be... two weeks? Oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah. yeah, two weeks. Next session, we'll just say. Uh, next session. Um, but then also, uh, for you guys, some good news. Uh, chat has been generous. Um, <gasps> we have some gilded benefits for you guys. Uh, we had two silver renewals with Onway. Uh, I'm sorry, four, sorry, four on way from, uh, I always say this fucking name right. Have Wolf Kick Boot. I'm probably still saying that one wrong. Uh, but that's, so that's a hero point for on way. And then uh, one oh, from awesome. Sounds like a password generator. It's just uh, from, from the yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Uh, but that, they've been a long time supporter. I could just never get the damn name right. It's like my horror Amarada. Um, and then Kyler got one from this eccentric. And uh, so that's pretty good for you. And then uh, Recif the Cripple did a gold renewal, meaning you all get a hero <gasps> point. Oh, thank you, Recif. Awesome. That's you. so kind. Thank you very much. So that is, uh, that is really good for you guys. And um, he's not here. Oh, so these give... say... Yeah, he's persistent as well. After the... Um... No, that is over, and I will thank Chad about that in just a second. So they are no longer, uh, aside from the ones that you got before that were persistent, no future ones will be. Right. Um, uh, there was some fan art for both comics and Bill's character, so I'll give comics his next time. Um, uh, but Bill, you did get a hero point for some fan art that was made of your bug Splendid. man. Splendid. Uh, Hell yeah. So anyway. They're spoiling me. They always spoil me. Uh, so yeah, you can find that in Gilded if you are not there. There's a link in the video description below. You can go into Gilded. We've got all sorts of memes and fan art and stuff going there. Uh, a lot of it's just roasting me, but there are some really good pieces of fan art of, of the different uh, characters and such out there. The roasts um, are great. Oh, and uh, Dragon uh, Noodle Soup's gifted subs were a super inspiration for Aiden. Aiden is getting mm. some love today. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. Is that cool. just for today also, though, or? 
that is also just for today. Okay. So make sure you use those benefits. Yep. And to uh, Disparu's point, thank you, chat. Thank you for your generous support over the last few weeks. Uh, I was t We met our goal. The Dallas goal is fully met. All tiers were unlocked. <laughs> Uh, you crazy chat bastards did it. We can always count on you. You're wonderful, supportive people. And uh, even though you clip the hell out of me and uh, like to roast me uh, to hell and back, I love you, Aww, chat bastards. Oh, because I love you. Yeah, and, see. Uh, I love you. Guys are <laughs> wonderful. Uh, He's so getting you mushy. That. It's almost cute. <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no mushy. There's no mushy. He's so I... mushy. Oh, oh, God. God. Oh, God. Damn it. The more mushy you get, the more chat will roast you in return. <laughs> I I Hate. Don't we love mushy Arudai? It's Aww. no mushy Arudai. Stop that extra girl. I swear to Mush fucking Rudai. God. Mushy Fucking hell, man. I Arudai. Swear. You know what, chat? You're a bunch of chat bastards. And uh, we'll see you in Dallas is what I'm trying to say. God, I hate you so much, Tigger's Girl. Um, that's it, though. You, you guys got us through those tears. Uh, and what I was telling uh, chat last night when they got us there, we thought that was going to take like three months. Like we, we planned that out as like a three month bi-weekly with a little room built in at the end. Uh, you guys knocked it out in less than five weeks. Uh, so you're insane. And um, we really, really do appreciate that. So we'll see you in Dallas. And for those who can't make it, we will send Dallas to you. Uh, Sevi and I, we will tag team Dallas. And you sick bastards will watch us do the whole thing. Um, but now, <laughs> that was on purpose, yeah, that, right, girl. Yeah, me too. That was on <laughs> purpose, okay? <laughs> Dragon Thank noodle you, soup dragon is noodle just soup. done. Yeah, that's so kind. Me next, right? Wow! Cheers. Look at all that love. Look at all that love. Um, you know what? You guys are gonna need it. Uh, but <laughs> oh so, uh, yeah! Wow! Two people down. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna do a tear fight. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm gonna get a TPK, it's gonna be today. Um, Go oh, ahead, yeah. my backup I'm character is a space long. clown. Oh, like, no, I just forget to paralyze clown? everything today. Yeah. I mean, you want space clowns. creatures? We'll give you space. God, man. That's uh, scared of space creatures. Well, they're I pretty creepy, to you? too. They're pretty creepy, too. Um, but all right. You so, see looking already. Oh, Jesus Christ. If you hear any sound, music, or anything like that uh, coming from our stream today, just know that is courtesy of Sirenscape.com. Uh, that's a place that's kind of like an online soundboard for all of your tabletop needs. You can kind of push buttons and make monster sounds, music, the whole nine yards. They even have sound sets designed for actual official modules that cover every scene, so you don't have to do any of the footwork. You just hit play, and the entire ambiance of that scene comes to life. Everything uh, from the rivers in the background to the dragons roaring as they eat your party. Um, um, only thing missing is your laughter <laughs> as they die. Um, you have to read every message. Yep, you do. <laughs> what? <laughs> what am I missing Sorry. now? Hmm. What could it be? What could it be now? Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, what was that message there? Hmm? I could say it a billion times, but you still have to say it. Yep. <laughs> I can't even do that. <laughs> oh. Would I? Yay! God, Hooray! He's so you happy so with the suffering. You, I know something is in <laughs> you today. I don't know what it is, uh, but you are in mischievous mode. Um, and thank you for your generosity, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming, and for making X Ray Girl do the evil laugh. That sound was not from Sirenscape. That is just pure evil <laughs> coming from X Ray Girl, but the rest will be from uh, from Sirenscape. Not a sponsorship, so long as we let you know that's where the music is coming from, though. They won't copyright strike our channel, and we appreciate that. So, last time on this show, these brave heroes, um, <clears throat> heroes. Yep. Uh, went around uh, kind of wandering the city aimlessly and um, they eventually wandered into a, a prison and uh, they, they went inside this kind of a old ancient prison and uh, they found a bunch of jail cells that had like frozen uh, bodies in them and uh, eventually came to like this medical looking room, an examination room of some kind and there was a table with like these straps that were clearly over something, over a form that wasn't there. Uh, somebody pulled out some flour and sprinkled it all over the invisible body um, to determine that it was indeed a body. And they spoke to the person, and the person was like, let me out of here. And they were like, well, 
we don't quite trust you yet. So they sent Jesperu to run around the prison uh, to find some paperwork to figure out what the hell this guy was. Um, and they questioned him a little bit. He gave them a bunch of different stories about being a manservant. But ultimately, the story he settled on uh, was that he um, had been here for a really long time um, uh, and left here when whatever happened to the city happened. Uh, and that he had been trying to sneak into the central spire um, whenever uh, he got caught and then he got sent here to jail. And then when they found out what he was, which Jisperu found out through the paperwork, a doppelganger, um, they started doing experiments on him uh, and they just left him here. Uh, they cast some spell on him, uh, probably presuming they were going to come back the next day and then never came back. Um and then he said, hey, I want to help you guys. I'm going to help you get to the spire. I know how to do it. And mm -hmm. the party was like, uh, we believe you. But we're also going to take out your eyeball because we're sadistic bastards. Um, and so they... That, they uh, to be fair, that, that was because he couldn't, re he couldn't yes. regrow limbs. And right. so he can't impersonate any of us. Yep. There was, there was it wasn't, it wasn't purely it. sadistic. It had a purpose. It wasn't mm -hmm. sadistic at all. It was mm -hmm. for a reason. It was very sadistic. Yeah. It was... No, oh, it wasn't. I, I believe you. Take pleasure in it. <laughs> I rolled my insight checks, and I believe you are a good, moral, upstanding person. When you say you're not going to betray us and do mean things to us, but I'm still going to take out your eyeball. It's pretty cruel. I, 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 I don't know he's being honest. Just because I believe him doesn't mean he's being honest. It wasn't you that did it. It was the person that passed the insight who did it, Mike. Um, <laughs> Yora, yeah. Yeah, no, but even Mike, did it. Mike might believe him, but it still doesn't mean that they're definitely telling the truth. Trust and right. verify. There you go. They could always change their mind as well. With the eyeball? Oh, oh, with the, the yeah. trail. No, no, no. Uh, it could the... be. In his, yeah, they, they, they might his now. Be, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he, his mind might now be changed. Good point, <laughs> Dismoro. I'll consider that information. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, you released him, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to help you. And he told you about this ritual. Um, the name that just blanked as soon as I was about to say it. God damn it. Uh, I'll look at it in a second. Uh, but a ritual, you have to go to these eight towers that represent the eight schools of magic. Um, and you have, to, you have to find the pieces of this ritual and then perform that ritual to bring down the shield that is around the spire so that you, you could proceed inside and find all the things that you're looking for. Did I miss anything? There's not going to be any. Um, no, that will not be merch, Zen. Not ever. The only thing was at the end, I was playing a game with Mike where... I was essentially pretending to be another guide. Mm. Oh, right. And right, so right. it was like blackmailing him into being a guide by going, no, no, we don't need him. That's right. That's right. right. You, you put on your little uh, song and dance for this guy. And mm -hmm. he uh, seemed to kind of back off a little bit. And then you're like, but no, you're going to have to prove yourself anyways. We, uh, we want you to tell us where to go. And he was like, fine. Um, so, yes, that is a good point as well. That is a good point as well. Uh, so let me move you guys over to the map. Uh, oh, you're already on the map. Nice. I don't remember taking you there. Huh. Uh, that often happens. That often happens. Uh, and then we'll swoosh. No, that, no, there will never be Udai merch. That will not be a thing that exists. Um, all right, so I'll talk to Savvy. God, I hate that so much. <laughs> <laughs> so you should have said maybe one day on a rainy day, but no, nah, nah, it's gonna be made it really early now. It is like lost day on exclusivity. One parent asked no, I'll ask the other one. <laughs> I hate Have you seen her new merch? Have you seen her new merch? I'll plug her merch. Yeah, you, I remember you shared it with me. It was yeah. like, take a look. <laughs> yeah, she's she's very excited about it. Uh, so if you're if you're interested in seeing some awful merch, um, she's created a uh, Cult awful. of Sevi merch line. Cult of Sevi merch line. <laughs> of course she has. Um, <laughs> and course it's, she has. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's inspired by like um, uh, I'm dating myself a little bit here. Uh, spy versus spy, um, mm. or like the old Wiley e. Coyote versus Roadrunner comics and stuff, where they're kind of non continuity. Um, but it's always like um, two characters trying to outsmart each other and it doesn't matter if one dies or not, the comics will still continue and those characters will return, that kind of thing. Um, and so it's, it's all about uh, Erudai and Fed the Frog trying to uncover <laughs> the mysterious leader of the Cult of Sevi and her always outwitting him. And they're like little comic strip panels that'll be on this merch. So you can go take a look. There's a link uh, in the chat from the mods 
Uh, it's pretty funny stuff. The first one is her and her cultist uh, roasting Fed the Frog on a sacrificial pyre, and it looks really <laughs> nice. It's really dumb, but it looks really nice. Mm. High quality. Strong, I'm hunting I mean, She has energy. possessed... How many demons has she summoned into your watch? It's point too many. At least two. Too many. Oh, can <laughs> I tell you guys? A, yeah. well, I, I know. We're, we're, okay. We're almost at the half hour mark, so I'm basically right on time for our usual shit. So I'm going to give you a real quick two minute story. Let me tell you something that happened at my workplace, okay? Why is there always another story? <laughs> it never week, ends. There's another story of hell that she's put you through. <laughs> but this one, this one technically isn't her this fault. Week. This one technically isn't her fault, although there is a strange coincidence that I'll talk about at the very end. Uh, but it's technically not her fault. So I have this individual that I work with at my job who isn't uh, known to be the brightest uh, bulb in the box. Um, likes to cut corners uh -huh. and that sort of thing. But he came in this one day... Um, and he was complaining about how he didn't feel well and he had a you know earache and had been bothering him all day and all of this stuff. And he we're used to him complaining, so we just kind of, you know, tunnel vision tuned it out. Um, and then we all kind of went to our own separate destinations to work on our tickets and do our stuff. And uh, while he was in there, he was like, man, my my ear is really bothering me. You know, it's like just really bothering me. I, I, I can't get over it. I got like this earwax blockage or something. and It's just really bothering me. Um, so. Most people would probably, I don't know, go to the bathroom or something and take care of it. Or uh, maybe if it's that bad that you, you can't work, you go home. Might be something you might do. Well, this guy, he was like, no, I, I don't want to stop what I'm doing. I don't want to put the server back together. And I, I don't want to have to go do all that. So I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to take a little paper towel. And I'm going to kind of make like a cone over my finger with it to make like a little cone shape. Uh, and then instead of like putting it on my finger and taking care what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the end of my drill and I'm going to put my drill in my head what? and pull what? the trigger to try to get the earwax out. So this guy drilled into his own eardrum with his own drill to get earwax it's out. A dark turn. What? Isn't that I... like the Darwin Did Award of the earwax? I feel like Wait, you've got, like, you didn't just push it deeper past the eardrum. That, that would 100% impact it and make it way worse. Like, yeah. I, I, when you started this conversation, I assumed that, oh, it's going to be like a, like a fucking spot. I thought it was embarrassing you. No, no, no. Yeah, this was no, a, no, this worse. Is a story about them. Jesus. And uh, wow. so he, he comes back out. I'm in there, like, working on, like, my next tickets, getting them set up. And he, like, he's got, like, blood down the side of his head and stuff from doing this. And I'm just like, what were you? Who thinks that putting a, first off, putting paper towel over the drill is going to do anything to stop the drill. And second off, why would you put that near your ear? I think that is so insane. You feel the need to use the drill bit. Why would you not just take it out of the drill and out of the drill or hand, something, anything. Like a pin vice or so, buy some yeah, cotton really buds or Q-tips. Insane. So he, he obviously left early and got sent to the hospital and he hasn't been back since. Uh, uh, so he, he's going to be out for a few weeks. But man, dude, that was the Darwin Award for sure. I just can't even imagine that line of thinking uh, i don't think any thinking is involved if you're if you're ever wondering Not why anymore. those warning labels exist on things that is the kind of person that makes them happen i, I saw a rollerball deodorant once that had the warning do not use on fish <laughs> <laughs> which, mean, which means that at some point somebody Someone used did. on fish because it smelled yeah i feel like my people are being <laughs> I do not appreciate <laughs> My favorite ear story is uh, there was a guy went into the doctors and said, look, I've been having this really annoying like pain in my ear for years. I've always had earache. It's just, I, I don't know what to do about it. Can you do anything? And the guy looked in his ear and he found like a snail, which he got in his ear from being in a river once. And it was literally eating his face. And that the noise he was Gross. hearing was literally eating the side of his face. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. He had a centipede like the other guy. <laughs> Don't go abroad oh and go God, in water what's... is what I learned from that story. <laughs> oh, there's so many stories about why you don't. Well, the bigger issue there is the amoeba that eats your brain and lives in the junk ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that'll, happen. that'll happen. So that was that story. I just wanted to tell you, you that. Like oh, and the, and the coincidental part was um, that it was. I, I don't actually think it's linked. Okay, I'm not suggesting that, but it was in the same room that she sent me that video that summoned that demon, which I thought was an interesting coincidence. Um, oh. But. So so the image of the demon just standing there completely dumbfounded. So, I, basically went, I made a guy drill into his own face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I think he's gone. I think uh, Fred the demon well, is gone. Well, he is now. But... Like he died? <laughs> no, 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 not that he's guy. He's in a better place. No, I'm saying oh. the demon. I think the demon oh, is gone. I think the demon oh. is gone. <laughs> no, I um, like the idea that he's still there. He turned around one day, saw that and went, what the fuck? <laughs>
Oh, and last thing before I before I start, um, I see some of you discussing that merch. Sevi did pick a very clever promo code if you want to save five percent. If you use end the fed as a promo code, you'll get five percent off their yeah. merch. Well, how is that cute? It's so what? cute. It's quite Why cute. Why not? It is cute. Yeah. I swear to God. All based. One of them. You're just a hater. It's fine. Hey, look at the Whatever. right side. If you get the guy with the I drill, see if you can trick him into sitting in the seat that you sat in that cursed you, so you can like move the curse over. That's a good idea. Yeah, there That's you go. a really good idea. Yeah, I'd you, have should, to you should commit to occult take him somewhere, somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's get into it. Um, so we left off uh, with you guys leaving the prison, I believe, or just about to leave the prison um, with your new you. friend in tow. Was he guiding us somewhere? Or I can't quite remember what happened at the end. I remember... Oh, yeah. I, I remember faking that I was the guide and he was going to guide us somewhere, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. To the spires or whatever. Or, right? Because he's the one who, or he... Yeah, is there a spire in this area? Because if there is, I assume that's where we'd get into guide us. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a whole bunch of them, as it turns out. Uh, if you look at this map, uh -huh. you kind of look circularly around mm. that main tower. Uh, you'll notice, for example, that first one you went to, remember that one that said insanity on it? And uh, mm -hmm. you guys uh -huh. were scared to go in there. There are several structures very similar to that around the map, um, such as here. Does it include these weird like leg things that are coming out the central tower? Because you said no. our eyes were drawn to that at one you, point. You do see that, but that is not one of the spires. Um, no, it's going to be more of these. It's the the towers that look like mechanical uh, phallic objects. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Me mechanical. <laughs> I mean, I would have uh, said penises. claws, but yeah. Yeah, yeah so they look more claw like. We know where his mind's at. Yeah. What are the glowy bits? You know, you know they, this is like one of those, what they're called, the, the ink blot images. Yeah. Rorschach. I don't <laughs> yeah, the see the test. phallicism in this. So. You don't? It's phallic they're, they're, I mean, symbol. They they literally He's are long and have like own, a little hopefully. a little like head at the end of each of these towers. I'm just saying it's got sometimes a tower like, is just like a tower. An arrow but, more than anything. I mean, I would say like yeah, like a fingernail on the end of each yeah. one. It reminds me of the original Little Mermaid cover uh, tower art. Okay, this is what uh, I want to say. The fallacy is the fallacy. Yeah, yeah, the uh, fallacy. Uh, that's that, right. he's, he's putting the phallus and phallister. I see. Yeah. Uh, the rest of us right. are fine because we just are... deep space now. Wow, <laughs> X-ray girl. Yes, we are on episode seventy. We're not sixty-nine anymore. My bad. Um, <laughs> really? It's always episode sixty-nine. Apparently, that's true. Right? It's it's always, always, yeah. Every yeah. episode <laughs> after that is always, <laughs> always. It's like we've just hit sixty-nine. That's gonna be like forever. <laughs> Uh, so he suggests that any of these locations could be ideal locations to um, to go to. These these towers sprinkled about, um, including the one you started with, the one that says insanity on it. You could go there first. So, and so I'm gonna another miracle. Holy shit! Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. Uh, wow, uh, dude, we appreciate you, man. You are killing it today. Well, that's yeah. going beyond spoiling us. Although we did give it to you, so there is downsides. <laughs> hey, feds need love too, man. Feds need love too. Yeah, but they don't deserve it. So. Uh... <laughs> oh, no, no! Damn! Wow. Holy shit, man! <laughs> you are spicy what they today. What, they deserve a different wow. what did I do to you guys, man? <laughs> It's like Mike isn't here, so there's no one to do it for us. So we have to pick up the slack. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow, People kneeling over the wreckage I... at fucking Waco. What did I do wrong? I never thought I'd say I want Mike back, back, but holy shit. Um... It's like, as it foams up out of the gutter, I shall whisper, look down and whisper no. <laughs> wow, Chrysanth, don't encourage this. Chrysanth's also been spicy lately. What's up with you? You're... Because you, you turned Chris, Chris Ant's, yeah, because you gave Chris Ant's in game character the most horrendous accent possible. True. Oh, true. Yeah, I remember that. Chris Ant has been in the chat begging us to kill that creature. <laughs> it did. It died. Yeah. And then he resurrected it. <laughs> She's still yeah. And then recruited friends. So now we've got loads of them. It's okay. I can cast Carco. Sorry, Chris Ant. 
Yeah, it was pretty abysmal. We tried. Um, Incredible. But yeah, speaking about this, the sort of the leg thing coming down from the main tower in the in the arrow we're in, uh, I'm going to go up to Kiora. Like, mistress, if you if you want to test the whether this new guide actually is a guide, get her to explain the the, the phallic object over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a to explain what that direction tower. is. <laughs> she looks up at the tower, looks back at all of you, and sighs. <laughs> uh, so Kiora will, in fact, try to intimidate your your new friend into doing this. Um, and he will he will say, "I do not know exactly." what we have to do when we get there. I only know that that is where one of the rituals lies. And we need all of the rituals to complete. Um, shit, what is it called? <laughs> it's been lots of a while, give him a chance. I was, I was, I was, the entire to that table has ruined her memory. We should always really need this creature. I was, I was trying to like stroll for it at the same time and like time my sentence to land on when I saw it, but I, I failed miserably. Um, fuck, it's the ritual of something. Why am I brain farting so bad on this? Eight um, things for the ritual of something. <laughs> the ritual what is of this something. Something. <laughs> I don't know. I was tied to a table. How do you expect me to know what the ritual is? <laughs> exactly. Um. Fuck. I am not. I'll find it in a minute, and I will remind you of what it is. But he. Oh, the rite of the arcane octad. That's what it was. Uh, no wonder you couldn't remember that one. <laughs> it's a tough yeah, one, man. No, it's, fair play. It's, that is one of the stranger <laughs> names that uh, that Wizards of the Coast has saddled me with. Um, there it is, Sorry, Rite of the bad. Arcane Octed, um, also known as Rao, A-R-A-O. Uh, so, yeah, uh, to complete that, we need the eight pieces of it. Um, so he goes, this tower, it will be one of those rituals. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was gonna go. That's all she knows. Trying to get rid of her, I shall tell you the rest. A hero point to Chrysanth's NPC. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Aww, that's cute. <laughs> I've got another chat. I've started to realize they can infight with each other. <laughs> NPC wars. Let's go. Mmm, <laughs> hot dog, yum. <laughs> <Flat> <laughs> Uh, uh, so I guess we head to the tower. Let's do yeah, it. Might as well. Let's do it. Uh, so you uh, make your way uh, out of the uh, city. Um, Kiara scoops you up and puts you over the wall. Oh, again. I thought we were going to the. Um, that is what I was talking about. Oh, oh, that tower. I thought you meant the uh, the actual tower. That this thing got it. Uh, my bad. That's what I was asking about. I yeah, misunderstood umbilical. your question. So the guy was just very confused because he heard the word phallic and was looking at something else. Uh, but then he realizes what you <laughs> oh, actually yeah, mean sure is was. this, this thing. Um, and um, uh, so that is a, uh, you see a, uh, a arcing strut of dark stone that rises from the ruined uh, junction high up on the central spire. And a gate on it is engraved with arcane sigils and set into the base of the strut. Um, and so when you ask about that, he's going to say that, uh, that is a way to get inside of the tower, but we won't be able to access that now. There is a force field that will prevent our access until we complete the rite of the arcane octad. Oh, okay. We should throw one of the, <laughs> one of the, uh, rats. <laughs> At the force field to see what it does. <laughs> this is a test. Wait, these wizards seem to have a, a, a very complicated entrance system. They'd have to go around and cast eight magic spells before they could even enter their home every day. It's mm, a good point. That is a very complicated garage door opener. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we can't get through there, then uh, yeah, I guess we go to the, the tower you were talking about. Mm. All right, so you do want to go to the Insanity Tower. Okay. Um, 
we'll move you back that we say way. say like that, suddenly we're starting to second guess ourselves. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I would. Well, well, this was the tower where we needed a wand of oak oh, magic yeah. or something. Oh, yeah, like ancient wood or something like that. <laughs> Is that really what it said? Extra <laughs> girl, you, you've got Mummy Buddy there if you really want some ancient wood. Shut it's, up! Uh, <laughs> just throwing oh it out God. there. Uh, he, he's there for you. He's there for you. And he's renewed, so those parts have been restored. They're, they're a little decrepit. Mm. But you need more than Ray's dead for that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, else. Hey, you. <laughs> yeah, and you but... ask why I make fun of you it's moments like these wow wow um <laughs> I, I think with this one given that I can see there seems to be trees on the other side of where we were I think trees? we should at least investigate oh, you... what those are over there you want to go there they first? look like trees we can go there first sure let Why me... do you sound so excited? I'm not excited. I'm just... Well, I just think if, if it was asking us for, like, ancient magical oaks or something, going to the only place with trees might be a good idea. Hmm. Now, That's probably okay, question. What was the precise criteria that the tower was asking for? Yeah, can we can we remember the message? We could yes. Or go in, just go inside and look at the message. I was literally we... just there to tell you guys what was in the tower, and then you told me to go to the trees. Now i got to scroll back to the tower. You guys are pains in my asses. It's, it's just because I think the trees are related. <laughs> right, if we're looking um, for, for some kind of wood, it would make sense to go to where there's trees, just logically speaking. Uh, so the inscription that you saw was in Draconic, as you'll recall, mm -hmm. and uh, it said, First... Shield thy heart with a wand from the nether oak. Okay. So. I don't know what a nether oak is, and I don't know if the trees next to us are nether oaks. Uh, can, do I have to do a <laughs> nature check to see if those trees are nether oaks or whatever? I think when we tried before, none of us really knew what a nether oak Correct. even was. You guys had all failed them, but maybe when you see these trees, something will spark something in you. Literally. Um, wow. That's a very nice nature check. Uh, I'll tell you more. <laughs> Once I actually get to describe the place you're going to, X ray girl. <laughs> I'm just being ahead of the and game. You said she was feisty today. Yeah. Wow. Well, I've had my definition. <laughs> like, uh, the lack of might <laughs> making him saucy. Yeah. I have an excuse. <laughs> death Wish Coffee does things to me. Um, oh. A canopy. Good oh, stuff. shit. I didn't start Sirenscape. My bad. It, it is good. Have you ever had Death Wish Coffee? It's really good stuff. No. It's, no, uh, is that I, I American? It oh, true, it is American. Well, they sell it over here, but I don't know where it comes from originally. But yeah, it's, it's like, supposed to be, have a lot of caffeine. A yeah, lot. it's like super okay. caffeinated, uh, strong coffee. And I don't see a difference, but the Queen shirts tell me that I am more feisty after I've had it. So you I'm just are taking feisty them today. Their... <laughs> Apparently everybody sees it but me, but I'll take your word for it. I will take Can your you word for it. Can you send me some Death Wish coffee from the <laughs> States, please, and someone? Okay, thank you. I'll you can probably you get it in Canada. Like, like if they sell it over here, they'll definitely sell it in Canada. Mm, I, I, it's on Amazon over here. You. I'll send it to you. I, I'll give you a. Mm, I'll give you my favorite one that I've had so far. It's ah. a gingerbread flavored one, and it's really good. Gingerbread. Oh, we only have the original flavor. I didn't know. Oh, that, that sounds cool. They have a lot. I, I normally drink just the. They have an extra dark roast. That's my favorite one. Uh, but for for the holidays, for Christmas, somebody gave me gingerbread flavored one, and it was really good. I was surprised. I usually don't like flavored type coffees with that one was, was it a witch in a house made of sweets they have pumpkin chai basically, basically. Oh, <laughs> that sounds so good anywho you sorry i distracted <laughs> you, you tell me which one you want Someone extra, mentioned food, i will get you off. one i will get you one um all right so i was doing something all right here we go wandering the streets uh sirenscape is playing sorry about that a canopy of golden leaves crowns the trees inside a shrunken basin. The trees grow in stark contrast to their bleak surroundings, their branches swaying even though the air is deathly still. Uh, so yeah, this grove is kind of nestled in a hollow uh, that's kind of in the city floor there, as you can see. Uh, there are vents that are spaced around this perimeter, and um, they're emitting like puffy gray vapors, which rise above the treetops and then disperse as rain right before you. Um, and when you're... 
Extra, no, I call. Do? I call for the rolls I need you to make. Uh, yeah, because he's like, yep, they're definitely trees. Uh, <laughs> trees do it. This seems like they might be hazardous in some fashion. I, <laughs> I swear to God, man, it's a twenty-two. Uh, uh, in addition around, to that, trees. then here I'll give you some stuff. Uh, there's an illusor, illusory kind of hemisphere above this uh, uh, arbiter. Ar Abortum? Abortum? God damn it. Why can't I say I that word? Say it's not an abattoir. Oh. Yeah. It's arboretum. If it is, we're in trouble. Arboretum, oh, yeah. thank you. Arboretum. Uh, that looks yeah. like a false sky, uh, but it's kind of flickering. Like Maybe it's malfunctioning a little bit. Um, and it flickers between what looks like a wild storm and a vast field of stars. And mm. in the center of this entire thing, uh, there is a an oak of some kind that seems to stand out a little bit from the rest. Um, what do we have to roll to investigate that oak then? What, like and the surrounding the area to make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I did the perception. I'm sorry. Well, the perception let you know that there was an oak that stands out from the rest. I, I gave you that. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, you could head towards the center, kind of walking through the trees to go investigate it a little more if you'd like. Uh, but in what way are you hoping to investigate it as you make your way in there? Well, you said it stands out from the rest. So... Why? There's got to be something different than it. What's is what different? I'm... Yeah. It's bigger. Like... <laughs> It's a bigger tree. Um, and also, it it's all the other but trees. Like, does, it, mm -hmm. does it look older? Does it look magical? It, is it glowing? Um, it's not glowing. It does look old and um, somewhat gnarled with a um, sort of a almost pale white gray looking bark. Uh, that's very smooth compared to the other uh, trees that you see in here. It definitely just stands out. Um, okay. Could I try to identify the... Yeah. Do I investigate, or what do I do to... Uh, you rolled a nature check already, and I'm going to say this nature check has told you nothing. Okay. Um, but sure, uh, you can come investigate this tree. It's just a matter of what are you trying to investigate about it. Physically, trying to figure out how a tree functions or something, that might be an investigation check. Uh, do you think there are some magical properties about this tree, or it might be something in arcane lore? That would be Arcana. Bat. Sure. Bat. Okay. Uh, what? What do I roll? Is, it, is there like a nether realm Arcana. in... D does nether mean something in D&D? It sounds like it means something. Probably reference to the netherese. Like, like, is there a, like... Oh, true, yeah. The yeah, he nailed it. <laughs> I, I, about to, I was gonna say you probably uh, you don't know, but the name might it's fly. Not, it's, nothing, it's nothing particularly spicy. No, but it's it would. Regional term. <laughs> no, because just because in a lot of stuff there's like Nether Realm and stuff. I wonder if it. Uh, there are all, name, all right, sorts but... of different planes and pockets of realities and things like that. Um, I don't think Nether Realm is one, but uh, um, there are things similar to that concept for sure. Um, nope. Arcana, you didn't tell you much here. Um, I mean, it is a bigger tree, and it does uh, seem like it stands out in a way that suggests to you that perhaps it's special. But is that magical? You're not sure. Yeah, detect magic then. Elfling, <laughs> what do your bard eyes see? <laughs> detect well, magic. magic. Bard, no. I'm yeah, checking. I can. Well, I'm trying to see if these well. other trees are actually safe as well. While, while this is going on, I'm going to be like whispering to Kiora and like looking very obviously, but kind of nervously at the guide repeatedly. Uh, the, the the aim and, and, and to Kiora, I'm going to be like, just play along, pretend like I'm telling you something. <laughs> just just make them suspicious. <laughs> she plays along. She definitely plays along. Um. <laughs> that's not true what will be that's kind of true um uh so you are uh, looking at this and he's kind of observing too and also observing you guys you notice he's kind of watching you watch him sort of thing and on the way your detect magic uh definitely picks up uh, a lot of magic here and yes the tree itself is among those things 
Uh, what school? It does not have a school attached, but okay. it is magical. Okie dokie. Hmm. Uh, I can roll nature, but I don't know how much jack of all trades. It's only going to add me one more to this. Hey, it's something. And you can get arcana off that as well. I could try arcana as well. Yeah. Roll, you go for arcana first, I'll go for nature first, and then we can swap. Oh, okay. Uh, I already rolled nature, though, unfortunately. <laughs> or two posts, I guess. Why not? Oh. Uh, add one to the nature, and then add... Uh, wait, arcana is... In, it's the same thing, so add one to that as well, when that sucks, so... Uh, 14. And All right. I don't know anything about the arcana side of things. Space bug mm -hmm. man, your nature check actually comes up with a little something for you. Um, this tree, its size and uh, its appearance... If your hive mind brings back some memories of things, uh, you think that this is more than just a tree. You think this is a creature, a being, a treant. I will relay that to the other party members immediately. Just big warning, that is a treant. That is not just a regular tree. Yo, so Ninja. I'm going to think back then just the question... Does that disclude it from being the wand? Mm. Uh, and that will be, yeah, to you know, ask it. Necessarily, yeah, they to are ask it. Basically, trees, just living, sentient trees. So they are still made of wood. Um, what would a tree but, speak? Uh, like you also we recognize like Vietnamese. Um, yeah, of course the trees are Vietnamese. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you did there. <laughs> uh, if you could also give me an insight check, um, Bill. Who wanted to Because you're the one that recognized it as being a treant. Okay. 17. You also think it is asleep. It's asleep. No, it probably has been for some time. Oh, um... Okay, so, so I'm one. going to say out loud to Kiora, um, essentially what we've just learned. You need to be careful of that one. It's a sleeping treant. Uh, it is. Although, it is necessary for the uh, towers. I would be very careful with what we're doing. And then he, like, looks over at the tower and goes, You don't need that one. That one's been no help. We should get rid of that one. Oh. Right. Um, <clears throat> do you want to communicate with it? Do you guys want to try to communicate with the tree? Do wake it up? It. Yeah, I didn't think so. I will. You do not wake it. I will speak to it in its dreams. Okay. Oh, okay. So I have dream. I dream prepared because I was going to talk to... I was going to try and um, talk to uh, our errant mage next time she went to bed. But... Uh, <laughs> Lucky I put it prepared, sir. So. Oh, right, right, right. You did do that. Um, and go ahead and give me a deception check as you try to unnerve your, your friend there, Disparu. Uh, all right, so you need a minute to cast this. A creature known to you. Uh, I would say it's right I'll add a hero point. <laughs> you really 17. want to keep this guy off his, uh, off his uh, feet, huh? All right, that yeah. is a pretty good deception. So he does seem to be sweating over there, getting a little nervous, glancing over, wondering what you're whispering about, why you're saying these things about him. Um, you think it I'll maybe you're getting under way past skin cast a little bit. Uh, all right, so this spell shapes a creature's dreams. Choose a creature known to use the target of the spell. The target must be on the same plane. Okay, that's so far so good. Creatures that don't sleep, such as elves, can't be contacted. Well, this one's obviously asleep. Uh, you are a willing creature you touch, so you do have to touch it. Uh, enters the trance state, acting as a messenger when this trance... Th oh, no. You. Okay, okay. You I, so, long, I, I yeah. see, I see what You can use it uh, a really long distance. So. Can't take action. The target's asleep. The message appears in the dream. It can reverse the target lungs or remains asleep. Got it. All right, fun. Fun, fun, fun. All right. Um, that is something certainly you can do. Is that what you would like to go do? Yes, please. All right. I'll, uh, um, I'll use my my uh, big heavy jawbone blade to like calm myself a little circle in the ground, and uh, I'll uh, go into the lotus position. And you just see my my eyes go like toward the sky, and my and my eyes rather than be their usual like silvery self, just completely blacken over. 
and you just I just cast my astral self into its dreams. Perfect. Um. All right. So you do this. So my other mic. Can Oh, um, I had a good glimpse at some netherese individuals uh -huh. in stasis, uh, so I'll try and uh, copy their garb as best I can. Got it. So I believe Got I can it. change my uh, sleep self. Uh, all right, so you are now accessing this creature's dreams. Um, are you shaping these dreams at all? Uh, no, I don't want to disturb it. I want to be as unobtrusive and uh, considerate as I can. <laughs> Says the giant. If I see anything that is. <laughs> well, yeah, this is nature. I like nature. Right, right. The rest of it's you I don't like. Just, when the time know, comes, all of you are food. This guy's fine. <laughs> this guy will be freed of this prison. <laughs> He's part of the solution. All guys are part of the problem. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, when, the, when the day of the branch happens. <laughs> Testing. It'll just be trees. Okay. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, shit. What does he think about, like, animals that aren't humans or humanoid? Like, ferrets and stuff. Oh, he hate those as well. Fantastic. <laughs> Domesticated animals, though. No. Oh, because are they like allies the of the humans? Yeah. They're, tra sure. they're, they're race traits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I see how he feels about my coat. It's a humanoid. I think it's a wear fur, that's fine. I remember why I was being so oh, Only pets. Oh, only the fur of old pets. Oof. Um, okay. I'll go fix that. God damn it, stupid fucking. What is that? Oh, it's a root eye. It's wish yeah. Oh, uh, well, that like creeped me it out. It scared me. It actually thought... freaked me out. Yeah, it's in my it house. Like a... Oh, there's an actor. I can't remember his name. But he has lots of AI voices done of him. Is it Morgan Freeman? John... It's almost hmm. jo John St. John esque. Oh. Yeah, it sounds like the AI voice of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> oh no, god damn Morgan it, Freeman. you stupid son of a bitch. Fuck. <laughs> but I thought Bill had just got really close to his mic. That's what I thought. I know. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks goodness. Great before, that was really weird. I didn't well, like it. It's gonna it. be back in a second. Yeah, you had a Man, John I just John no. I had a I had oh, a video. Oh, dragon noodle soup. The, the walrus, walrus is, is dead. dead. What? A rude guy killed him. Ooh, rude guy killed him. Yeah. yeah he Maybe did. that hero well, no, point I'm, will save him. I'm going him. back. We're resurrecting that damn walrus. Who knows? So Who knows? The walrus rides in to save the day. The final battle. Uh, okay, all right. So it's like 1,500 pounds of anger. It could 100% kill most things. True. I think I got this fixed. I uh, Man, I just screwed up, though. I had a video in the background. It was um, working before. Process no, no, I, I know, but I had a video in the background processing, and as soon as I turned on my voice changer, it, like, errored out. So that's really fucking annoying. Oh, yeah, do not render and use your computer at the I same would time. never that render was, a video while live. That was a bad idea, I guess. Oh, well, I'll just have to recover that later. Um, but okay, so you go into this dream, and it is a uh, a golden landscape of just like a, it's a like there's grass that is like literally it looks like shimmering gold all around you, and um, there are strange, bizarre looking, almost alien creatures flying around the landscape, and the sky is a scintillating uh, tapestry of various colors, and this tree stands alone in this field, just swaying in the breeze, and it seems to be doing so lazily and happily. I'm, I'm, take, I'm going to take a moment to appreciate this 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 utopia of what I kind of want to make on my, when I get back. Okay, I'm going to take this into consideration. Okay, memorize it, memorize it. Okay, and like as as quiet and gently as I can, I will because I speak Dru I speak Druidic, which I believe an, a good chunk of uh, plant based creatures do, or the very least adjacent languages. I will uh, actually. Uh, what is the uh, Triants and Druids tend to have a fairly long-standing like tradition together. Is there a particular um, method to hail a Triant from its slumber without, uh, you know, disturbing it uh, fully? 
Uh, so a couple is there, things. Is there a, is, is the, on the stick to the etiquette. Uh, so a couple things. Uh, Druidic is just written, so you wouldn't be able to speak it. But mm. um, you know that I'm most common easier. common treants uh, would speak uh, Elvish and Sylvan, uh, but they would be able to also understand Druidic if it was written um, and in common. Uh, this one does not strike you as your average treant, however. Um, so you're not exactly sure if it would know Elvin or <clears throat> Sylvan, but maybe common. Uh, could still get through. To my t my telepathy goes through languages anyway, so. Oh, so. okay, all right. Uh, so probably not even a concern to you. Um, uh, but yeah, you you could uh, you certainly know the ways to be respectful towards a treant and approach it and speak to it with the the reverence and the the due um, deference that they deserve for their long-standing history and knowledge of the world. Precisely. These are these beings are, as far as I'm concerned, like avatars of nature. So. Um, and this one in particular is pretty big, so it's probably been around for a while. And especially, like, contained as it is, I'll treat it with the utmost respect. This is a creature that's been captive by these damn city folk for far too long. But, uh, yeah, I shall uh, hail it as gently and respectfully as I can. Who is this who walks through my field? It's Morgan Freeman, I'm telling you. <laughs> Morgan Freeman's got like a weird kind of like inflection to his voice though, but it is that same kind of depth. Exactly. It's like, oh, I couldn't yeah. smell yeah. you. That kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mainly mean, remember Morgan Freeman, the guy doing the impression of Morgan Freeman hunting someone. <laughs> He's right, you know. Identify myself. I am Ezra the Bantam of the Black Grove. I seek a new brief audience for a brief I may. You have found yourself in my dreamscape. It seems you have granted yourself the solutes. Are you here to I'm steal of right. my wood? Look! It wasn't me! <laughs> I only smoke! God, can't have druid encounters with a bunch <laughs> of little toddlers in your stream. <laughs> There's such things as druid grove. There is only a ram ranch. They could, they could have at least used a one by woods. Like, oh, God. God. Well, well, well if you're offering. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I need to contact you without disturbing your slumber. And primarily, we seek knowledge. To whom am I addressing, sir? I... Since you have me at a disadvantage. Am a being ancient. Be your knowledge have even the thieves who stole me from my home. You may call me as they do. I am the Nether Oak. We seek to topple the remnants of the, the civilization that stole you away from your peace. And hopefully, in time, return you from whence you came so you may find peace in the waking world as you do in dream. I loved you in the dark night. <laughs> I wish I could quit you. <laughs> <laughs> no one should have that much power. <laughs> you would seek to return me to my home. And sp spread a paradise like this across the entire world. Ambitious. The people who travel must be here, ambitious when one. They are long since ambitious when gone. one only has thirty short years. Hmm. What do you intend to do here? 
in the Nether East. I intend to undo the harm they did and to spread across the world the proper state of things. Nature to reclaim every sullied state, every broken city, and drag it back to where it w once was and should be again. My compatriots, on the other hand, are more mercenary, so I seek to curtail them. So your roots have ambition and hatred? You would use them to tear down the foundations of this city. As safely as I might. If I can do so without harming the people who are wronged by this place, all the better. Things must be returned to balance, and with balance, the natural state of things. Make me a persuasion must be check. Be careful curating the garden. With advantage. Also, can you say a woo die in that voice, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried, don't, chat. I tried. I don't you know, if super chats are given to have him do the voice with the woo die, I think he'll do it. Okay, Sevi Jr., you can't just make deals <laughs> for me. That's not <laughs> how this works. Well, what is this NPC thing I'm doing? There you go. Okay. I am never putting you two on a stream together. I just want you to know that. You already uh, did. You do realize that. <laughs> I can I can change that plan. That's I a can for future Arudai. That's, yeah, that's a future, that's future Arudai's problem, and I can I can fix that because I am currently in the past. Um, okay. <laughs> it's very roundabout method of going into time travel, but there we go. I my own problems, but I could fix my own problem. <laughs> exactly. That's some real Terminator shit that I just went through right there. And I do not drink from my mug weird, Chrysanth. I How saw that. I, I did, I now I have to watch how you drink. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a there you go. No, die. I don't want... God damn it. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you for the Oh my gosh. <sighs> I'm sure you get a hero with a cat face on it, too. So you have to also make the little, like, woo woo woo. Yeah, you can don't make, impersonate the meme. <laughs> don't make promises of you, we wouldn't have you to fix it. That does seem to be my worthwhile problem, isn't it? Yeah, um, all right, fine. <laughs> Do woo die. <laughs> I love a little twitch Why? in the mouth there. That makes me so happy. Why does that make you happy? Why does my misery only... bring you such joy? I really want to know what voice change you're using as well, because this is amazing. This is the I best voice change you've used. Uh, you mean in general, or which voice I'm using? No, for this voice. Yeah. Uh, it's. <laughs> it's known as the, the narrator is the name of the, mm. uh, the Ooh, voice. So this is like the trailer voice. I think this is the one green tech channels use. Mm. This is yeah, it's like that trailer voice, uh, like um, in a world where you can't escape from your darkness. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. In that a world where voice. you can't escape from a wood eye. From from the Uwuin, <laughs> you can't escape. He hasn't, he hasn't escaped from it yet, but we'll. Uh, one uh, enemy fed one. stands against the rest. <laughs> Oh, wow. The Wudai coming this fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go. Okay, no, no, sorry. Here's Ron. I've, that's now ruined it for me because now I know that that's the cum zone voice. Ew. <laughs> oh, cool. no, it is. That is very the similar zone to the cum zone voice. Oh, it's very similar. Hey, yeah. Noelle's here. Hello, Noelle. It's good to see you. Would you like me to use Hi, this voice for, for Dungeon Daddy going forward? I can do that for you. Dungeon Daddy <laughs> likes it when his DM shows up to his shows. And then oh, he didn't have it turned on. Please not say that. Oh, gosh. Why? Zephyr loves Dungeon Daddy. It sounds a little better. Dungeon Daddy. Now, um. No, stop. Please stop. You know what I'm walking down there? You know what I'm saying? It sounds like raise a. Raise the tree, raise uh, the branch. Like, DC Sorry, Douglas disturbing. has a voice very similar to that. He's the guy who voices Wesker. He can do that that fucking voice like very close to that as well. Did that I don't tell you? Disturbing. 
So there's a whole character. So there's the, the, the whole Dungeon Daddy thing is a reason it off that because somebody bought me a shirt with this that says Dungeon Daddy on it, kind of like a shirt. And uh, so I did this whole <laughs> bit. And I uh, talk normally in this voice. <laughs> yeah. How is it so yeah. long? Yeah. My bad. <laughs> Dungeon Daddy. Yeah. All right, well, there we well, got it. Like, and you're it. Not on the act, it fits, but when you just talk normally, you just go. It sounds really <laughs> odd. <laughs> is it? Is you know, it? Uh, register voice like that with a bass. It tends to. Is, am like I normal now, or am I on? My my no, my. Still, yeah. <laughs> well, you just stay like that. That's perfect. How about now? Am I good yeah, now? But... There, oh, yeah, there, there you right. go. How about Dun now? Dungeon <laughs> Daddy. Oh, kawaii, isn't it? And the chip. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, so yeah, that whole Dungeon Daddy that thing. That's just um, like the fairy from Tracking Guys. There was this, there was this whole persona I did uh, for Dungeon Daddy, and they hated it because of that shirt. And I always be like, Dungeon Daddy likes it when you whatever. And Ch the Queen shirts in particular hate it. Dungeon they hate Daddy. It. Um, so for a fundraiser for uh, the one that we just did for Mummy's Mask, uh, I had my character Falister go away, and then I made a character based on it. He's a barbarian, um, and when he rages. He, come, he becomes Dungeon Daddy. So his his whole story is there's a there's a god in Pathfinder named Callistria, and he um oh, he no. bedded her he bedded her oh. and he he pleased her so thoroughly that in her ecstasies she moaned into his ear his glorious nickname Dungeon Daddy. So when he get when he rages he becomes Dungeon Daddy. So in his rage he just That's talks in that voice. <laughs> They hate Pretty it. Awful, yeah. They hate it so much. So I made a fundraiser. Listen to my brilliant grift, okay? I, I made a fundraiser. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to have two pools, two links that you guys can donate to to get us to Dallas. If you donate to the Team Falster no. link, Falster will come back. If you donate to the Mort link and reach a thousand first, Mort's going to stay longer. That's Dungeon Daddy. Um, I've never seen two pools fill up faster in my life. Uh, <laughs> you might not want to phrase about way fast. Um, yeah, true. Full of what? Full of, yeah. what? <laughs> full of <laughs> Dungeon <laughs> Daddy's <laughs> golden... Or, no, not golden. Uh, divine no, no. nectar. Oh, no, divine no, no, nectar. No, no, no. no. Divine Why is nectar. Why still golden, a rude eye? <laughs> oh god the, oh the divine god. nectar is what i was going to say oh um, is that what that's worse yeah dungeon daddy's golden nectar i mean no no stop oh and this then the we did a mini goal been. we did a mini goal um because chris Santos was being a brat uh, we did a mini goal that canonically she's in in character game in that universe who's married to dungeon daddy and she's very happy about that uh -huh. I'm beginning to think the guy with the drill. Right <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you <laughs> this is why he's a DM and not a player normally. <laughs> <laughs> I am a wonderful player when I get to be. All right, but you were talking to this uh, Nether Oak. You persuaded it. Let's continue. You. I trust you for some reason. Unlike the rest of these netherese who dare to take me from my home and use me for my magics, I will give you my wood. You may take of it free mm -hmm. if you swear to use it to mm -hmm. erect mm -hmm. nature to erect. where the netherese buildings once stood. It shall be done. Very well. I will continue my slumber. And you may take from my branches as you need. And we just see this piece of wood growing out from him. <laughs> from where? Oh yeah, you definitely see... <laughs> you guys see this outside? Well, he threw this branch. You definitely see the, uh... The tree inside gets to be... One, one of the branches then perks up to get a... I'm, just, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Can you take that voice off? Is it still going? <laughs> God damn it! How about now? Oh, much better. Yeah, there you go. Hi. What What did you say? I actually didn't get any of that. Oh. Uh. So as he's in his trance, you you see the the tree amp actually kind of get a, a stiffy. One of the branches sort of uh, erect uh -huh. and stiffen out to you, and uh, <laughs> to allow you to start uh -huh. pulling branches and stuff from it as as needed. Yes, it is erect in the <laughs> nether region. Time this is happening, my brain was just adding, now you're getting scared. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, uh, somebody grasp it firmly and <laughs> give it a tug. <laughs> well volunteered, Elfling. Uh, no! <laughs> wow, you have to do it now. 
Oh, true. Right. <laughs> would, he, true. would he even let any of us do it? That's, That's true. A, it, it's his. Yeah, yeah, we should, yeah. Yeah, you should do it. Since you're your slave, you probably wouldn't recognize that. See, this is, okay. Now, this is a tangent. It's going to sound even worse considering the circumstances, but the spell wood shape being removed from the druid spell list is bullshit because that would have completely removed the issue here. And that was the best spell on that list. But <laughs> Wood shape. Okay. Wow. It's weird. I mean, they are all wood wood shape. Shape. Like stone shape still, though. Mm. I hear Flint yeah, is quite the wood, shaper. wood shape. You could ask her. <laughs> Only if it's ancient and rotting. True. Why? True. <laughs> <laughs> It's all got horrible. The older the wood, the better. Oh, uh. <laughs> this one feels a strange sensation in its nether regions. Uh, you don't have yes, to be loud about that. We're going to have to, block, we're gonna have to hide this out. This whole episode has been like, just... Filth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. filth. You know what? I was yeah, doing good until you all snickered power. like a bunch of school children about him offering you wood, okay? That was that was the breaking point. How are we supposed what? to react? <laughs> Can we stop offering each other wood? Are we done? Being a druid's we're done. Like Kata- this is Katan all over. A Rudai offering it to everybody else. <laughs> I can we, offer it. The tree yeah, offered it. After it's you true. get well, the druid, can we go it, yeah. to the tower and see if we can activate it or whatever? Sure. I'll, I'll, yes. go, I'll go do the harvesting and the pruning, and then on the way out, I'll cast a wood, uh, plant grape on him so he can regenerate. And as we walk out, I'm, I'm going to look over at our little guy and go, See, we didn't need him. He knows nothing. <laughs> He hasn't even proven himself. We can get rid of him safely. You only need me as your guide. I'm doing like my full worm tongue. <laughs> Episode 69, part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two people thought of it at the same time. That's the funny part. 69, two, all you could eat. Amazing. Um, 69, three, feast of the gods. You have uh, successfully uh, <laughs> taken what you need of this ancient being, um, and uh, it does not uh, retaliate or bother you in any way. It just allows it to happen. Um, and you guys can move on if you'd like, or you can hang out here in the field longer. Whatever makes you happy. Any usable plants or uh, like anything useful in the area? I've got. Pl- I'm going to be casting plant growth to recuperate the area from anything we take. Would that so, be a nature check herbs? or medicine check or something like that? Sure. I've got you can do a nature. Which check. one? That that would be a nature check. A little better. Mm. So um. The so. Most of these plants seem like uh, they're not particularly uh, useful. However, uh, you can see that some of the uh, plants here could be used to make poisonous concoctions if you happen to be skilled in the use of a poisoner's kit. Which I believe the elfling is. Um, actually... You got it from your... Your uh, background. Poisoner's kit. Wait, you made a disguise. Yeah, you started with one. poisoning. No, you got a poison. I'm sure you got a poisoner's kit. I'm sure of it. It's not on my sheet. Well, let me double check. Your background <clears throat> wouldn't upload properly. I'm I'm bringing it up now. Uh, proficiencies, poisoner's kit, and you start with one. Okay. I trust Bill on this. Well, he just pulled it up, so yeah. Yep. Because I remember, because I got the herbology kit and the alchemist kit because Aiden got the poisonous kit, so he rounded out the team. And she needs to have the poisonous kit, because when I'm in beast, when I'm in animal form, it means that she can harvest the poison from my various animal forms. Ah. Oh, that's where all true. the flying snake poison comes from, which gives us a decent... My arrows are so great because of you guys. We try our best. Um, Arudai, if you look at dragon noodles, I'm up for it if it's okay with you. Uh... Considering what the conversation we've just had, that's very nefarious. <laughs> is, is he actually oh, he puts on the Morgan so yeah, is he This episode's ask, going on fucking Pornhub. I don't know about anything else. Is he asking for that, or is he just calling you one? I, I mean, I don't care. I, do, I, I, do, I, I assumed it was... I, I, I took it as a hero point for being a ferret, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't care. 
I just I thought okay. he was just I'll... like calling you a ferret. But uh, if if he meant, do you want okay. you to be one? Mm, sure, why not? Uh, hey, look for the hero point. I'll act like a ferret. It's fine by me. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you can. It's a slippery slope. Next thing you know, it's fine. <laughs> you you <laughs> are. This is how furry artists start down that, <laughs> that slippery slope. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're stapling fucking like carpet samples onto a frame. No, eventually my banner is just going to be like different D and D characters of myself all fighting each other. That's the plan. <laughs> Hail the one nine nine. What's going on? Um. All right, so you guys are gonna head to the tower then, right? Let's move you along to the tower. Um, there's like this castle thing right next to us. Mm. Do we notice anything about it as we go past? Sure. Uh, you know, you also notice there is also a little tower over here, by the way, and one over here, by the way. Um, that is literally right next to you as well. But let me tell you about this castle thing, as you have called it. Um, <laughs> oops, I passed it because uh, I got too excited. Um, all right. This, oh, actually, I'm going to switch my voices too. One second. There we go. Back to my normal mic. Uh, this colossal building has many lofty turrets and is in a state of disrepair. The ground below littered with the rubble. A giant sized door at the base of the structure stands slightly ajar. That's about as much as you gather from the oh, building. Oh, so it's literally it. just a building then. Okay. Um, I'm not, in that. which case, I'm not going to draw attention to it as we kind of have a mission. Yeah. If we didn't notice anything from the outside. So, yes. To the giant stick of wood tower okay. thing. The original <laughs> one or one of the other ones that I have? <clears throat> the original. The original one. Yeah, the original one. Yeah. This one. We just got the, the stick, so. The Tower of Insanity. All right, to the Tower of Insanity it is. Uh, and I'm like humming the Mission Impossible theme as we're going there. Like, doo, 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 doo. The, the, temptation. the temptation to just use the branch like a fucking... <laughs> and, swap, and swap the ferret into the middle. Ferret Tyler sees ferret. himself as like a little bit of a spy. <laughs> He's been going, I'm a stealth mission. The Sirenscape stuff. Da -da -da. Hold on. Uh, Google... Right. I try to stealth my tiny ferret feet keep <laughs> learning all the guards. Well, that's the thing. He's like still in armor, so he's still got all the, the yeah. same penalties as the dragonborn, but he still thinks of himself as a little a little ninja. Let me reset it and see if it works. Oh, that was really weird. Now I'm imagining like a ferret just in a, like a, a tube of armor made of like beer cans. Well, you know, it's literally full plate mail, just, uh, well, full plate armor just shrunk down yeah. to ferret size. It's the same gear that I've got with like hammer and, and shield and everything. just strong. Yeah, of the same. It's just everything's tiny. Can you imagine a tiny ferret stuff. on Kiora? Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, yeah, I would be on Kiora. Yeah, because Kiora's like twenty-one foot tall or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like tiny on his shoulder. Am I still in Kiora's boobies? Yes, if you want to be. Um, Safely. This is the worst one. You wouldn't ask like vaults <laughs> on. That's really weird. The music's not working today. That's odd. Uh, <laughs> So maybe there's no Sirenscape coming through? I don't know what's going on there. Sorry, guys. He's, he's um, like building a ladder in the middle so he can get out. He's like, <laughs> just build him like a, a uh, oh, what's it called when you, the, um, not a mana pool, but what's the one they put on uh, elephants? Uh, fuck, it's going to bother me now. Not mental. Mm. All right. Um, I don't know why it's not working, but we'll just continue. Yeah, hey, I can't remember uh, what that's called. <clears throat> go back up. He's got like a catapult in there so he can be fired out of him. Howder, that's it. All right, so this tower oh, reaches yeah, upwards. I never like would have known that. <laughs> a towel and a stonework studded with chiseled runes. There's a blue light shining from the highest window. You guys have been in here before. I'll remind you what's inside, though. Um, a huge anvil chiseled, chiseled with vivid blue runes rests in the center of a 30-foot diameter, 30-foot high circular chamber. Resting atop it is a hammer adorned with matching runes. Six armored figures stand guard around the anvil. At the rear of the chamber, the frozen corpse of a wizard lies in a pile of rubble. Blue flames flicker from uh, 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 the sconces spaced around the room, illuminating a carved inscription on the ceiling. And the inscription was the one that was like shield by heart with the wand of the Netherrug. That is correct. 
Now, I get the feeling that only one of us should probably be in the room at the time. <laughs> How does one shield a heart with another oak? Just put it across your chest? Hmm. Well, Mr. Bookman, is it magical? Do you need time with it to tell? That's time alone with this wood. Wow. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and your guide will point out. Five minutes. <laughs> that is an inscription from the right of the arcane octad. Which means. Okay. It is a piece of the ritual mm -hmm. that we need. Oh, congratulations, Captain Obvious! <laughs> uh, do you honestly think I haven't told him that already? Why do you think we got the pissing wand? Oh, it's also, he doesn't know that, that our dragonborn only turns into ferret every now and then. He's probably terribly confused. <laughs> like, was, was this person part of our party? <laughs> no, 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 everyone just, just like a... <laughs> beneath my notice. <laughs> Bow I down, with him. snail! <laughs> I shall I shall confirm. Do you know the process? No. Doesn't know Fair anything. Okay. You're not even super useful this as a guide. will help hmm. us get in. Okay. So I'm going to climb up on his shoulder and whisper in his ear, do you want to know what happened to the last person that was useless? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she was called Fallon. She's not in our group anymore. <laughs> if I was you with these people, I'd make yourself useful. <laughs> Can I hear this? <laughs> you don't have patience <laughs> for lesser beings. And then, and then I'll climb back on the cure's shoulder. It's like, well, I'm not, I'm not being quiet about it. I'm just talking in his ear. I bring that to uh, I people energy to a group. I feel it improves morale. She's <laughs> <laughs> uh, posting aside. Okay, uh, we're going to try to try and ascertain what we're dealing with here in terms of the ritual. Uh, we've got the inscription on the ceiling. That, the inscription on the ceiling is just shield by heart with the wand of the nether oak. Is that correct? Because I can fly up there and check if need be. Yes. You, What's you on can, the ceiling? We can, I can read it. You can definitely read it. It's interconic and it says first shield by heart with a wand from the nether oak. Okay. So if you're going to cast it, I would suggest the rest of us back out of the room. Okay. Uh, can we? Is there any other inscriptions or such in the room, or any reading material or such, or is it just anvil, hammer, inscription, and that's it? And bodies, bodies. and some dead bodies. Here, here we go. Uh, that's the full description for you, but um, nothing additional that I didn't describe there, um, other than. Uh, you would notice that next to the body, the first time you investigated, the floor was kind of like broken up, like something had come out of it, which you might have an idea of what that is now. Yes, yeah, one of the tomb tappers. Mm -hmm. Okay, try and figure this one out. Well, it okay, it's, um... and it's just the anvil. There's no, um, oh, it's, it's, there are braces at least. Correct. We can go back and ask the guy if need be. We may need to. This is a process that I'm not familiar with. My character has no kind of uh, not. My character has almost no knowledge of forging. Well, would it be helped yeah. by spending an hour to attune to the wand? Most likely, if, that, if uh, is there actually an attunement that can be made to the wand? Can you can you attune to the wand? Uh, yes. You don't. You would not need to attune to this. Yeah, it's just a standard. Okay. Is there any other kind of magical effect? Any? Um, we know that the nether the nether oak was magical, but does does the wand remain magical? It does have. Um, it does emanate magic. Um, okay. You don't yeah, know so that it, it would could have just be that you need it practice. on your person. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to, just to be safe, I'm going to keep the wand over where my heart is, which in Thrive Greens is like, it's roughly the same place as humans. <laughs> I've got three of them. Uh, no, but I think I do have two stomachs, but... Uh... <laughs> okay. 
I have to be very careful of how I do this. This is one of those ones. Normally, I'd just be throwing like bolts with like bits of cloth tied to it on this one. I'm hoping for the best, but this is a bit tricky. Okay. Uh, is there anything else I can infer from the area? Well, from the runes particularly, is there anything that, uh, in terms of knowledge, is I can ascertain? Because we're, kind of, we're kind of groping in the dark on this one in terms of technique. Yeah, if we can translate the runes, I'm happy to try and help. If Or if you don't want to, I'm, I'm just going to hit it with the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't You've see anything up there what that, um, that uh, stands out to you or is translatable. It seems to be very ancient magical runes um, outside of uh, your knowledge. There's a question. Do I have any not? Do we collectively have any spells that would yield information like identify or legend lore? I, I, I didn't take those kind of spells. <laughs> I think pretty much all my spells are either death or healing or reviving. Yeah, Except stone shape. On the same line. Well, stone shape's always worth it. Well, like stone shape, I mean, I could cast like a barrier for you if you wanted, but I don't know whether you're help. Uh, doing something like that would probably cause more havoc than not. We know what we need for protection, we just need to know what we need to do. I could cast um, Death Ward on you. Uh, save that one, it might, we might run into whites or similar. I mean, okay. I've got so three we... slots. Wouldn't be the biggest. Don't worry about it for the time being. Okay, uh, okay we've, got, we've got a hammer. Uh, and we know we need the the uh, Thoral, which is the... Does our doppelganger know if it is, the Rao is a physical object or if it's a mark? Or similar. Did he see the Netherese mages with a marking or any kind of item that was unique to them? Uh you're asking the guy you, you took off the, the yes. table, right? I'd like to... Um yes. he shakes his head. No. I only heard of this right. Remember, I tried to get into the tower. Before I knew the right existed, I was not aware of anything such as this wand at the time. <laughs> Did you have heard in passing of anything that might tell us what it is? A library or a, some kind of occult repository? There is a library, yes. A building of knowledge over by the grove. A large square building with an open door by any chance? <laughs> yes, that's the one. <laughs> I saw your dragonborn companion staring at it. And Ezra's just gonna turn very slowly to look at the ferret. <laughs> look. We're going on a trip. Didn't think we needed it for this one. I already showed you the wand. The will do. You think you the need more than the wand for this? <laughs> The entire time we've been in here, I've just been looking at the metalwork like he's looking at <laughs> like a raw dog turd. Look, if you, if, like, if you feel the need to double check my advice, fine, we can go to the library. Just remember, I gave you more correct. information about this than that one. And as I walk out the door, like shoulder barge him. In court. <laughs> as a ferret? Yes! <laughs> He I jumps down from Pure and just Tetsu's ankle. That one. Just, eh, that's that's, not, his that's ankle. not a shoulder barge. That's, an, that's a fucking like moonsault off the fucking top. <laughs> I, I, I still have the same strength that I do as a normal thing. So they're like, eh, in his ankle. It's like, be like, He's like, what the heck? Probably hit him on his foot. Rolls the fuck out of his ankle. It's just writhing on the ground. <laughs> I'm carrying the rest of the way. Out the way, peasant. Why do all of the people in the party who can turn into animals maintain their strength in animal form now? Yes. Seems to be catching. I mean, that's okay. Back to the library, guys. Okay, time for another walk. <laughs> so you leave this anvil. Man, you guys are scared of this place. Uh, I want to just hit it with the hammer. <laughs> and uh, make what with your... the hammer? The stick? No, the anvil. I would have held the wand and hit it with the hammer. The anvil. 
That's what I would have done. And now Arudai is going to be like, you would have died. But apart from that... Most likely. That sounds like something that would just instantly... Sounds like a good place. idea to me. I will confirm nor deny any of the things that can happen to you in this city. <laughs> this is going to be one of those ones where, like, if you don't hit yourself in the hand with it, it, like, insta uh, I, I mean, I probably would have had an advantage. It, like, it did say cold. The guy was frozen. Which is something I'm good at. So. Is, My species is from the desert. I'm not fucking with that shit. <laughs> no, but I, I, I do actually... I am actually good with cold, so... Yeah. It would be an advantage. But either way... To the library! Measure, measure twice, cut once. Come this on. is... Uh, what's it called? National treasure. To the library! Let me refresh this again and see if that <laughs> works now. I know the quote. Um, all right, so you head uh, to the library. Well, it's National Treasure. It's great. National Treasure? That was a great movie. Yeah, um, sure I hear the new TV show where um, they, they... It's awful. ...made a woman character was incredible, so... Mm -hmm. I, uh... As long as the woman character is played by Nick Cage, I'll still watch it. Well, she, <laughs> she can magically solve all problems. There and it we just go. happens. It's working And again. you never know why. She just solves them. It's just Nick Cage in drag. All right, Sirenscape's working yeah. now. Yeah. There you go. Look, I mean, he had a lot of divorces and a lot of kids. He had to take those roles to pay for them. <laughs> he had to pay for that T-Rex head he had to return. No, that's that's genuinely it, though. Oh, he had yeah. so many divorces oh, yeah. and so much alimony payments. That's why he did all those terrible movies. And to be fair, he did actually buy a T-Rex skull, and he did have to return it because he found it was stolen. And he said, like, I ain't keeping this thing. Here you uh, go. Yeah, a T-Rex... I, like, I imagine most like T-Rex skulls grand. are owned by someone. <laughs> Oops, well, the owner's going to turn up. It's a bit long, long past work. <laughs> it's not like Dan Bass going to find one on a beach. All right. Um, this is what I want right here. Uh, this colossal building, uh, okay, I described it to you. Um, again, it's uh, got a, a jar door outside at its entrance. All right, let's get a shuffle on before we lose the audience. <laughs> uh, can I do, like, a perception check to see if there's anything... Trap like. You sure can. This wow, looks... why, why are my rolls horrible today? This, uh, this door looks safe. No problem. Ladies first! Right. <laughs> throw, the fer throw the ferret at it just to be safe. No, ladies first! <laughs> Should I just <laughs> kick it? <laughs> the ferret? I just kick the ferret through the door. I think it's a good idea. Nice uh, roll! Damn. Jeez. Uh, yeah, you feel pretty confident that uh, this, this door is safe. You don't see any wires or bells or whistles or anything that would suggest to you that this is uh, trapped in any way. In fact, it's a jar, so if there was a trap, you think it would probably have already been triggered at this point. Um, nor do you hear or see anything uh, on the other side that concerns you. Hmm. Kyla's going to walk up to yeah. Flitz and go, I can understand your hesitation at entering this place. It's not like you can read. <laughs> Everybody gangster about head. the doorway until they <laughs> the line. There are four lights! <laughs> Aren't you just so cute today? He snarls. Oh, he's trying to be all brave. <laughs> Well, I pick him up, put him on my shoulder. Pull back his hammer! <laughs> He's oh, still the so same size. <laughs> oh, I just realized it. Uh, uh, Mike. I, Aiden got muted. Let me refresh real quick. <laughs> do be like that sometimes. Yeah. Like, no, nobody needs to hear. Story really more. Discord does, to be fair. There we go. Mm. Um, but yeah, if there's if there's no ch uh, traps on the door, we will enter and. Uh, Agreed. Mm -hmm. I, Fantastic. I, I mean, it's a massive library, so we're going to be looking for like some kind of central desk or organizational place. Do we decimal system? Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if the wizards would have that, but yes, the magical <laughs> version. The equivalent. <laughs> Uh, you head in, and the shelves, uh, they, they kind of line the walls of what appears to be like a labyrinthine-style library. It is a very big place, crammed with books on every conceivable subject across these shelves. Um, and as you're kind of heading towards the center, looking for this organizational 
area. Um, very shortly after, a uh, bespectacled, jackal-headed humanoid paces into view, carrying a bundle of scrolls, uh, and kind of waddling behind him is an eyeless, white, uh, five-foot-tall penguin in a leather harness, uh, dragging a small cart laden with books. And the jackal-headed figure stops when it sees you, and it lets out a joyful gasp, and it says, Ah, you must be the library, it's... Skiven Scry has need of your assistance. Um, Elfling, I feel like you have found your vocation. Nope. Yeah, yes, we are the we are absolutely the librarians. Um, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, I'll go ahead and make a persuasion check on that. Uh, as a, I can do it as a performance or as a persuasion check. <clears throat> Just performance. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. We. We. Uh, sorry for taking so long. Uh, we're. Uh, we have fun. Uh, again, a pardon for our tardiness. I don't know how many hundreds of years it's been, uh, but you can understand how uh, you know things get in the way. Oh, all right. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I completely understand. Um, Skiven Scry is elated that you are here. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a piece of black licorice and starts chewing on it as he's talking to you. Uh, since you're here, I could really use your help. I need you to help me find the books of keeping. Um, <clears throat> could you remind me uh, what, what, what those are again? Because, again, it's been uh, quite a long time. Kylo's going to scamper up on his shoulder and, like, poke him in the neck and be like, It's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. What a cute little thing you are. He says, booping you on the nose. <laughs> <Smalls>. <laughs> uh, what was your question again? I'm sorry. I was distracted by the cute little minx. Oh, could you remind us uh, what those books are again that you're trying to find uh because you know again it's been a long time so i can't quite remember it's escaping me we have been in stasis for a while mm -hmm. uh, uh yes the books of keeping uh they are well they are um four tomes that hold the true names of every yugoloth ever created i'm very very interested in finding these books And, and like that, the the, um, the Thrykreen Druidic fucking database just got updated. Someone created the Yugoloth. Someone's gonna fucking die for this. <laughs> <laughs> Scriven Scry is very interested in finding these books. Do you know if there's some sort of organization system here in the library that's still available? I... Uh, Scriven Scry is not sure. That's why he needs you, the librarians. It well, does seem like something a librarian would know. Can we can we identify what this creature is? Because this sounds like this guy is a Yugoloth of some kind and is about to cause us a lot of havoc. You know what? That sounds like thing. a great arcana check. And while you're doing that, the, the penguin kind of waddles up near Flit. And um, uh, Flit, make me an insight check. Wow, what is going on today? Run into a fucking Disgaea boss fight is what's happened. Uh, strangely enough, you do still pass, despite that abysmal. Oh, uh, God. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> Let's that go. Plus six, that helped a lot. Um, you, you see that it seems to be like almost uh, subtly, um, almost like secretly, like he doesn't want this uh, Scriven Scry fellow to know. He seems to sort of like be trying to get you to notice one of his leather straps. Um, where is this leather strap? It. It's on on the on the the penguin mm -hmm. on his on his body. Uh, in, uh huh. Do you look a little closer <laughs> at it? <clears throat> Where is it? You said on the penguin. Where is it? Notice, this yeah. leather strapped penguin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Where is it? Like, the fucking pretty like version of Van Dorkel. Where, where, where do you think the leather like, strap is? 
I don't know. Yeah, that was, that was, it, wasn't, it wasn't weird until you, you kind of started talk, making it weird. You think yeah. I'm talking about like his leather thong? It's just a strap on his shoulder, we okay? No, it sounds like you're talking about shape with a leather like, harness. Like a satchel? Like you could have said that, the leather strap from a satchel? I but know. He this is a how leather this... strap on his body. <laughs> that, that is how this thing describes it. It's not like a All right, I'm just reading to you dark. what it says to me. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, so if it's like a bag, you look at the penguin's bag. Well, that's an improvement, uh, for Let's sure. Say, that's worse. <laughs> sure. Um, no, the bag with the sat, uh, the the strap. I don't know. I, whatever. I look at you look at the bag with the strap. <laughs> this is not getting better. Uh, <laughs> as it turns out, it's the, you know what? I blame you for this because you started with all the words. I yeah, was being yeah, upset. Okay, you <laughs> are a bunch of toddlers. Uh, you and all you would. So scratched into the leather are some words. They say, help me. Um. And then I need an arcana check from, uh, from you, Bill. Okay, I'll give you a cold destroy. Okay, uh, I... That'll do, pig. That'll do. I talk. I tell Bill, uh, mm. "There's a penguin here with a bag that says help me." I. Do, do, how, how do in you? My head, in my head. Okay. In my head. Um. Um. It is an arcana loth. What does that mean? I will refer, refer, refer to the others. That's an arcana loth, which means it's a yugoloth related. Who's a? You, I believe they normally obsess with arcane knowledge. So, this is what he looks like. Uh huh. What about the penguin? I will show you. He looks like. I hope he's, I hope he's cute. You ready to see his leather strap? And I wouldn't describe him as What's cute. What's really innocuous? You said penguin. Well, Penguins penguin. are cute. That's not. Oh a penguin. god, no! I was going to make a crack earlier about being like one of those mountains of madness <laughs> penguins, but it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, he How looks cute. like he's a prisoner. That's like a, a penguin king's after he's been attacked by a face sword. Sword. There he is. So he's wandering around. He kind of waddled up to you, and in, in his collar, he is. Uh, the, the words "help me" have been etched into it. I mean, that did um, say leather choker. I guess you could have I said choker. Technically, sure, it's on his neck. That's that more of a sense. yoke, or no, as a bridle. Um, as a bridle. Uh, yeah. While that's happening, I lean. I lean down and I say, "Hi, what's your name?" To the penguin. <laughs> oh. I, I don't speak your language, Telepathy. but don't worry. Um, Just, <laughs> let, we we will help you. Do not worry. Oh no, because I have. Oh no, I have, I speak to plants, but not to animals. What the heck? Do not oh, no, I do. do not worry. I'm an elfling. I speak jive. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay, then I don't do yeah, the spell. Telepathy. I don't use the spell slot <laughs> then. So if if Bill is Avengers of a Thoric Green Druid, if, if Bill is relayed the message of the help me, I'm going to climb down off this other guy's shoulder, <laughs> and I don't like. Scory over back to the um, the team. Well, oh, standing. and you relate to everybody else that this is an Arcana Loth? Yes, I'm, I, everyone's getting a telepath, telepathic inf piece of information with everything I know about an Arcana Loth. All right, I'm going to then tell the whole group. An Arcana Loth, they're sly jackal-headed beings with humanoid bodies. They employ magic to take any humanoid form they like. Uh, typically, they do this to gain the trust of creatures that they want to negotiate with. Um, but either way, uh, they are typically well groomed and uh, they, they make themselves look um, well put together. They're very intelligent and powerful spellcasters who hunger for knowledge and power. Um, and they are indeed Yugoloths. Um, so there you go. Yeah. So uh, as well, Yugoloths, one of the few things that compete with Thrykreens in terms of the <laughs> horrible abomination. <laughs> Running rights. I mean, he looked pretty cute from his picture. <laughs> he looked and like to, a wolf person. To put it into mechanical, um, mechanical understanding for you guys, this is an eighth level spellcaster. Oh. Ah. That's <laughs> uh, oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah. Shit. Um. <laughs> so so say, you got anti magic field. Cast it now. Then beat him to death. I mean, I do have uh, silence. That would be very funny. Uh, <laughs> so, you'll help me find the books. I can't read, apparently. Um, yeah, not the prices. We are only helpers. 
diversity high, see? <laughs> your your little penguin is so cute, though. Can I play with it? Just King Sport? Sure. Uh, King Sport is unfortunately blind, so you have to play carefully. Oh, just like this guy. <laughs> I point to the guide. <laughs> hmm, um. I'm only half blind. Do you Quite. want to play with the penguin with Maybe me? The most. Still with the two poor blind creatures. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, yes, he will help you play with the penguin if that's what you'd like to do. So I'll say uh, we are like uh, auxiliary librarians. We've not been to this branch before particularly. So again, we need to acquaint ourselves. If you know where like the central location is so that we can then we can help you find your books, right? Because we also need to acquaint ourselves with this. Um, we need to find the ledgers. Right. Mm -hmm. So that we can look up where to find these books and to also find what we're looking for and to get the library up and running again, of course. I start drooling on the wall. Ah. <laughs> Skiven Scry is very happy to have run across you then. Perhaps Skiven Scry and yourselves will discover the secrets of this place together. Uh, now, the books of keeping. Skiven Scry wants this very much. So perhaps we split up. And when you find the books, you tell Skiven Scry yes. Uh, sure. Share and share alike. Yeah, sure. Oh, After all, there's yeah. a library. It's... Do you want me to make a deception check? Yes. Can I roll insights as well? Yes. Uh, Both are good ideas. Seems to be up and up. Uh, oh, go ahead. Hang on. I had a hero point. That's kind of usual. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I got 12 instead of 11. <laughs> uh, that's one of my best rolls. Like, that's a plus eight. Again. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, thank you for that villain point, the horror host. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you, you think that this guy's on the up and up. He's just looking for these books and wants your help. And, you know, he's very grateful for your help. Um, yeah, I feel like I want to do insight too. Yeah. With poor pe oh my god! <laughs> and he uh, seems penguin. trusting of you, Anway. Um, okay, Anway, you feel a little less comforted by Skiven Scry's uh, desires. You don't think anything good will come of him finding these books, mm -hmm. and he seems friendly enough to you now. But you don't suspect that will last long term. You okay. also get the feeling, however, that underneath this request, it's not a request, and that things could go really badly if he thinks you don't want to cooperate. Right. <clears throat> well, put up the sh uh, keep up the charade then. Uh. Huh. Once oh, you know okay, the got, once we know the stuff ones. around That's here. Nice. Once we're around, we know that our way around here, yeah. we can see we can lure him into a piece of scenery where we can ambush him, but... Yeah. Are you relaying this to us mentally? Yeah, yep. I'm going to say, like, if we can, like, if this guy tries anything, we need to know the area first. If, right. Because once we know, if we find this book, he's going to jump us for it, almost certainly, if he thinks it's to his advantage. Our kind of loss are notoriously backstabbing little fuckwits. So I, I'm going to walk up to the Arcanoloth as well and st still drooling on the floor, be like, don't worry, Arcanoloth. My father worked in this library and he got me this job and he said I'm the bestest reader he's ever seen. So I I'll find you. You can trust me. And walks off drooling on the floor. <laughs> oh, we're showing as if we're like the dumbest niece. party ever. <laughs> Everyone loves a nepo baby. <laughs> oh, what a sweet little minx you are. <laughs> Don't worry. I Skiven Scry is most excited to work with all of you. Oh, by the way, you call Skiven Scry Skiven Scry. You do not have to call Skiven Scry Arcanalith. After all. Skiven Scry would not call you Minx as your name. What is your name? My 
my name is Kylo, the greatestest everest. <laughs> what? Isn't he just so cute? A descriptive <laughs> name, Kylo, the greatestest everest. Well, mm-hmm. we but, should speak uh, up. My dad always told me it was the bestestest name he's ever. Well, he wasn't wasn't in those words. I can't really remember his words actually. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm really smart, me. I'll find it, don't worry. Kylo, you know, you could probably ride the penguin because of the collar. Oh, there you yeah. go. I'll guide him with his with his little wingy thing. <laughs> <laughs> if I tug on this one, go right. If I tug on this one, go left. Oh my gosh, let's go. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> shall we? <laughs> Uh, and we then, as the, as the Arconolith uh, Skiven Scry sort of steps away to start going looking through shelves himself, uh, you now see just beyond him there is somebody lying crumpled on the floor, dead. Uh, does, does he look like a fox? Skeleton no. dead or. Yeah. Like fresh. Like fleshy dead. Recently no. dead. Fresh. Is he dressed in the Netherese fashion or in the adventurous fashion? Or is it just Ver- a Velen and she's got on the bad side of the Is it Velen? It's not Velen. It's not Velen. <laughs> it's not Velen. Uh, oh, but it dang. does God, appear to be somebody it. from uh, this area. Uh, you know, gone. probably from the from the Ten Towns or something like that. They, they definitely have dressed in cold weather. Who's down here? here? Uh, okay, is, is it like Ten Towns, like civilian, or is it Ten Towns, one of them, like mage circles? Because there's a very big difference in style. They have cold weather gear. You suspect came from the Ten Towns. Um, whether or not they are from the Ten Towns is up for debate. Um, but if interesting, we search, yes. I'm imagine, getting, imagine blundering all the way down here past all the Ramorazes and Drow, only to get jumped by a furry in a library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did he, did he not out. say anything about, like, he, he didn't have any information about there being, like, a central hub for this library? Like, he didn't know. He didn't know anything about that. He's only just arrived. We, we just look for it separately. Yeah, all right. But it, is yeah. is there anything on this guy that says where he's from or like identity uh, to identify him or cool. not? What killed him? Sure. Mm. Do you wait to check this well, out? Well, I assume until Skiven Scry him. is gone, or are you doing this while Skiven Scry is still kind of exiting? Well, well I mean, how well, obvious is sure it? Oh, great! More thieves are in here. That's like, all we this need. is just like, like, we look, we, like we're just looking at the body. There's a dead body on the ground, right? Like, yeah. Like, it, is it obvious be, to Scriven Scry? Like, is it in full view of us? Like, yeah. it'd be stupid to ignore the corpse while he's still in the yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want us to get rid of that? It's probably bad for the books. Yeah. Uh, he stops and turns and looks like he he blinks in surprise. Looks down like he didn't even know it was there. He goes. Oh, yes, Skiven Scry forgot. That librarian wasn't very helpful. Poor dear, poor dear. Uh, do you no. mind if I eat him? <laughs> Skiven Scry does not mind. Why let good meat go to waste? My Enjoy. Is frankly, thank you. <laughs> and I start like hacking up. We're going to recruit of it. a fucking Yugoloth. Well, I'm sure Kiora's joining in. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Uh, save the best probably. bits for you, Kiara. <laughs> Kira, no. Kiara's probably like in this library, like hunched down, <laughs> her head like against the ceiling. The books are all like little tiny, like Barbie doll house size books to her. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the uh, Skiven Scry uh, just sort of <laughs> and then turns and disappears into the the maze of scrolls and books and tomes, uh, leaving you with the ominous corpse lying on the ground. How many uh, rations gonna get out of a corpse? More importantly, what killed it? Yeah, and see if we find out what killed it. Oh, I guess it's an uh, evil can I do an investigation or <laughs> you got it... the impression, without even needing an insight check, that when Skiven Scry said the librarian wasn't helpful, poor dear. Yeah. That Oh yeah, it was definitely no. yeah. the cause killed of death by. was pretty like, evident. Like disintegrated or on set on fire, like what are we dealing with here? Right. Uh, the, his chest has a very gnarly looking scorch mark on it, but it's, um, it's weird. It looks like he was burned, but also rotted at the same time. Okay, I'm not mm-hmm. eating rotting meat. Well, he's down oh. at, least one, at least we know that you can down at least one spell slot. <laughs> um, I ask Ezra, can you, um, see what's going on with this little guy at so confused by he saying help me. You don't understand common? 
The penguin suddenly what? speaks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you didn't speak common. I could not speak fair, openly she doesn't in front that of my master. Well, so that's your master. Why do, do you need help? Sometimes. My master is cruel and wicked. Made me blind. Help me. Something's wrong what, with the penguin. Men will die for this. What do you need help with? You want to escape or see or I uh, want a restoration? To be free. Help me would escape. That, would that fix the blindness? Sincerely, less a restoration. Uh, it removes the blind condition. Would it? Would it fix permanent blindness? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That'd probably be greater restoration, I think. The nature of it. Uh, I have greater restoration. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, are we some... sure that we want to annoy a oh, incredibly think. powerful creature? For <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Yeah, not yet, Literally maybe. no reason. No, no, no. It, it was more of a more of a question. Here's, <clears throat> right, here's, here's yeah. my here's my plan. Here's my plan. I'll relay this to everyone telepathically. We'll, re, we'll re, look around the area, find a natural hazard of some kind that he hasn't found yet. I've got hallucinatory terrain. We can lure him into the hazard, whether it be something that would entrap him or injure yeah. him, and then both of us who have stone shape uh bury him in granite and choke it and then <laughs> like i like cast cloud kill into the into a gap there you go and we that give him fun. we give him the hot we give him the hot box treatment <laughs> we give him the old cheeching chong combo yeah well, i mean it, you could use a uh, uh, hypnotic train or whatever or, or convulsion i can use that either more um, compulsion's yeah. level four, so whatever one's lower level. Or I can, or I can summon eight fair pixies, and we can beat him to death with our. <laughs> well, considering how high, how powerful his magic is, I'd probably rather just, yeah, need just bury him in stone. In we it, yeah. need to hit him hard and fast. We need to make yeah. sure we can't cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'd say silence, and then silence, and then all the things you said afterwards, so he can't cast anything. So, science on him, so, then stone shape on the on the floor to encapsulate him, then we beat him to death. But first, we need to find a location where it would be advantageous. We could just there might be an overhang where we can just drop like three tons of stone on him. That would be the trick. There you go. But we need to survey the area. No, I think it's only like five foot. Um, isn't stone shape like a five foot cube? So it's not that much stone you can. But it can yeah, drop five feet in any dimension. It, five feet in any dimension. That means we can cut out a five foot length stone and drop a pillar onto him, for instance. Hmm. We drop out yeah, something with load-bearing, we can drop a ceiling on him. Again, it's just completely based around, we need to survey the area first, which we can do whilst looking like we're helping him. Mm -hmm. I, I would suggest continuing to look for the book at the same time. Yeah, exactly. As well as this. Exactly. And there's a book, if there's a book, uh, like what's it called, do you call it the Book of Keeping? Every Yugoloth true name is a hell of a lot of oomph. Mm. I mean, what, do, what does that do, though? Yeah. It's like oh, four... True, 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 name. true naming, yeah. Um, true naming is like summoning and binding and controlling. That's an army of worse than demons. Because the Yugoloths eat demons. Yeah, but where's he gonna use it? Probably gonna go back home and then control all his friends. Isn't that really our problem? <laughs> yes, when he comes back with all his friends. <laughs> yeah, what maybe you we off? could Bad. just leave. Our host words. Yeah, that's not gonna work. No, unfortunately, we need things from here. You would leave a wizard al You would leave a wizard unattended. Maybe you not. Never, you would never sleep safely again, child. Some matters need finality. Now, let's get scouting and searching. Kingsport, do you have any information about, I don't know, some kind of organizational structure around here? I'm blind. <laughs> what is that got to do with anything? Ezra looks at him as if to say, wow, we're gonna rub it in for the poor little shitbag. 
It's the mouse failed you! <laughs> hey, Helen Keller, do you know the way around here? No. How do you <laughs> blind to prevent you from describing? <laughs> I can't see the books. I just drag the cart because my master makes me. So you're entirely useless. How did you come into the service of your master, by the way? Like, how did this... No, like, she if you're entirely with useless, business. if you are entirely useless, why should we help you? Hmm, good question. I shield, the peng- I shield the penguin <laughs> from such cute. cruelty. Look at him! I mean, I know he can't see himself, but you can! That's why I help you, yeah. Isla, because Skipping... you're cute right now. <laughs> yeah, and that guy isn't! Just hit him on the head. Look at him! He stabbed he little be... floppy things! And then I just, and then I tickle him under the chin. Ezra looks at, at the ferret with a, a, a childish, venomous hatred in his eyes and says, He may be blind, but I know by your following of oral and bane that you have no taste. Hmm. Yeah, you follow he looks at you bane? impetuously. Like he, he looks at you like a little kid who thinks he just had the best insult ever under his belt. <laughs> The penguin suddenly Translate seen... his note. Ezra is six. <laughs> Wait, did you say this in his mind, or do you say that out loud? I can't say anything out loud. I can only speak telepathically. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right so he didn't hear that. Um, <laughs> because the, the Thraki right. language is just clicks and clacks. It is just insectoid. Got, oh, got it, got it. <laughs> uh, all right, so King Sport does not hear that. Um, but King Sport seems a little downtrodden, having been told he's useless. Um... You're not useless, and poor child. But he's the one that described himself as useless. Somebody like, can you else help us all? Different. <laughs> you were ableist. <laughs> Somebody else asked how he came in uh, to, to be dealing with this Arcanaloth, and he says, Skiven Scry promised me a life of enlightenment, but I have known nothing but cruelty. Dragging hmm. his books, being subject to his fits of rage, he will kill without a second thought and move on as if nothing was extinguished at all. Skiven's cry is maniacal and insane. How long have you been down here? What are here? his bad sides? <laughs> how long have you, if you had to guess, how long have you been down here searching for these books? About 310 day. What? Okay. 30, 30 days. days. Oh, yeah, yeah you, gotta remember, you. you gotta remember Favorin runs on a 10 day cycle for a week rather than seven. It's literally 10 days. Mm, okay, so not that long. I mean, it's a while, but still. Was he the one who awakened? They've been here for like 100 years or something. Um, mm. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, why are you dead? <laughs> <laughs> no. I was awakened by like? another. Other is no longer alive. Hmm. What? Was it the one he slew? It wasn't that guy back there, was it? Yeah. No. That was someone else. Who was it? I <laughs> you need any, you to and resurrect your old fellow. Pal. You can tell me who it is. Well, I can't use the word master because it seems weird. Someone mm-hmm. new who wandered in. They were looking for something on behalf of someone named Avarice? Not someone I am familiar with. But when they answered they were not a librarian, Skivenscry killed them. Okay, so Avarice has got a bunch of goons down here, good to know. We're about as this intelligent song- as that we'd expect of an Avarice follower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, character. Someone has wronged the penguin. Someone needs to die. Time. Okay. So we'll survey the area. Yeah, I sp- and I suppose at this point we're looking for two things. One would be the book and the trap. A, probably a, a primary area to find the book. Like just trying to look through all of these, just searching through it would be take forever. So again, trying to find some sort of central hub that would have some kind of system of organization a ledger yeah yeah like librarians would need a central place where they go and do work yeah the very least a place to make tea 
Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so that there's some organization system. Uh, right, the right, there has to be. <laughs> there's no English tea, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, sure. He, uh, the King Sport will travel with you, dragging his cart behind him. Uh, as you guys make yourselves uh, head to the very center of the entire yeah. structure, where indeed there is a circular style desk where you suspect the, the librarians who used to attend this place may have been. Um, I, I'm going to unhook him from the cart and I'm going to carry the cart myself. Oh, they just, they're just, they're just needlessly cruel. <laughs> Well, uh, it's like this Ezra animal. of all people who is like a bit, who is like, worried Ezra about doesn't like seeing cruelty. animals. This is, attempt, this is an attempt to, to domesticate an animal, which is right, right, right. Ezra yeah. Yeah. Well, bearing in mind, I am sitting on his face, like guiding him with his <laughs> antenna things. <laughs> You've been glared at several times over. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either that they, or he walks the, into a wall. I shall carry the penguin in the other hand. <laughs> I'm not. It's not that bad. I'm not like deliberately guiding him into things. Yes. Let's see. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you uh, you find this uh, station, and um, it has some like little file cabinets. Uh, they're really old school. Though you remember, remember back when libraries had uh, the filing cabinet system, kind of like the Ghostbusters filing cabinets where the cards flew everywhere. They have those, mm -hmm. like a roller deck. Yeah, yeah, really long. And you you pull it out, but these drawers seem to have almost like infinite. It's like a it's like a it's like a filing system of holding almost. You can just kind of scroll through endless like cards in here and uh, find out where various tomes and things are located, but it's written in a language you don't recognize. And the organization system itself doesn't make a lot of sense to you um, without having some sort of knowledge about the structure itself and how they designed this place. It's a little confusing. If we can figure this out, I have a suggestion. This place almost, if it has a book of all the names of Yugoloths, it almost certainly has other dangerous books. Oh, yeah. We could try and trick him into reading a book that will just insta kill him, or at least bind him. <laughs> or we can try and find a book that can let's bind him. Yeah. Or yeah. we'd, we'd need to work out the thing first. Uh, yeah. And I don't have anything for it, I think. So, do we have any, does, do any of the absentees have any kind of. Uh, like uh, comprehend languages or everything how is your nether east language skills i mean i have universal speech but that wouldn't work here wouldn't be useful oh, and then yeah, i speak I uh, some art i wanted to show you guys and then what? i just speak common elvish and sylvan this is what? uh I'm... so from from your point of view when you're walking through the city here's some artwork um of the tower from like the side view Oh, oh nice. that looks ominous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you were a load of magicians. When you were in Terok Nor, how much more <laughs> ominous do you need? You were a load of magicians, you can make your city look like anything, and you choose that. <laughs> it kind of looks like a doofy elephant. <laughs> like, they've never been described as evil wizards, but the more we find out, the more it seems like, yeah. yes. Yes, they're just evil wizards. Maybe they are. Maybe mm. they are. I mean, it's a, it's a very Cardassian looking place, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> The, f the the flying city. Yeah. I hey, listen. I used to go to the library all the time as a kid, and I was very familiar with the card catalogs. I just couldn't think of the damn names. It's been a long time since I've uh, yeah. I mean, but they don't. I don't know if they even exist anymore. No, it's yeah. all digital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, so yeah, what do you want to do? Could try and brute force it. Uh, oh, uh, alternatively, I could try and use a summoning spell to summon a creature that could. Have a spe uh, something like that because I can conjure Fay. Didn't someone have comprehend languages? I'm sure we've cast that before. Yeah, yeah mm. I see. I, I seem to recall someone had it. I don't know whether it is. It might be one of the days. I think it might be Kiora. Because she got their spells. <clears throat> so, right? Here they. Uh, Kiora had comprehend languages. I, I'm sure. We, I, it's just because I'm sure Kiora has. She's cast spells Spoken before, about I don't remember it. that much. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure see. we've had comprehend languages at some point. In a, in a pinch, I can cast, like, conjure woodland beings and yes. see if there's a fate. Yes, Kira as does, it. Kira does hmm. have comprehend languages, um, but looks like she already used her spell slots. 
Um, um, I have a pearl of power. If I give her the pearl of power, can she use it and then give it back to me? Yes. So I do that. Um, all right. So she will use the pearl of power then to regain her comprehend language. And uh, yeah, she will now be able to read the system. So she can see the like names of like all these tomes. And it is a lot of shit. Um, and she doesn't see anything, at least in her initial quick perusal, that would describe what uh, Scriven Scribe was looking for. But again, there are a ton of cards in here. It would probably take hours just to go through them all and even look in the first place. And as she's looking, uh, she comments that you know, there are titles, but the weird markings on the side, she thinks that might be some sort of organizational indicator, make mm. no sense to her. She doesn't know what those mean at all. They're, they don't seem to be a language. They, they seem to be some sort of marking of a system, which Comprehend Languages doesn't solve. Um, I wish you could just say you had one book. more level. Yeah, I don't know. Did, that's a good way to get... That's a very good way to get beaten to death in a room like this. Did yeah. we not get given the title of the book, or was it just a description? Books of Keeping, I think. Books of Keeping is the title of um, a four-part tome, uh, four-part uh, book or set of tomes. And well, can um, she not look for the title? She or is are the titles not in like alphabetical order? Oh, okay. Yeah, but the, the system doesn't make it doesn't appear to be, appear in, to be alphabetical. It's alphabetical it's a, order. They've right. got some sort of system for this that she doesn't understand it. And there are just so many, like this is just one drawer that she's looking through that has like thousands of cards that she's wiping through and there's like 12 drawers. Uh, uh, so she I is asked, saying that this place is massive, essentially. I asked the penguin, is there any rooms that are locked that you've not been able to access? Eh. <laughs> Kingsport does not know, is not aware of any doors we were not able to get through, but Kingsport can't see the doors so unsure. The master tells Kingsport so little. So I'm going to beam out to the, the, the rest of the team as well. We don't know whether this guy's a spy, just here to note down whether we're actually trying to help his master. That's true. Um... And I'm also going to tell Kiora to, while she's looking down titles, look for anything related to the Eight Towers or the Octa, whatever it was <laughs> that we were supposed wow. to be uh, looking for. Okay. So to look for both other things at the same time. He wanted to say the Octoron, but now it's a clear <laughs> rail and come out. <laughs> All right. Um, in your guide, uh, he will um, say. Perhaps we could start looking around through the shelves to find useful information. And maybe as we explore, this system might start to make more sense. At the very least, if we can, if we have a point of reference for the symbols, we might be able to puzzle it out. Sure. Without, without the context of the, what the symbols might mean, we will never be able to puzzle it out. Mm hmm Okay, True. Thomas and Brute Force works. All right. Oh, for a reading montage. <laughs> In a party where most, most of us exciting. can't read. <laughs> Just a lot of us picking up random books, looking at them, not understanding it, and putting it back. <laughs> In a montage. Can you guys give me a group investigation check? Okie dokie. I'm ass at this. Okay. Sure. I'm hurt. <laughs> I don't Why believe do I always you. roll high on the thing. Okay, well, every everyone with like dog shit for the skill has rolled low. <laughs> everyone who's got the skill has rolled dog uh, shit. Okay, well I'll use uh, that is hero wow. point. You guys are going pretty it's damn average hard. on this, huh? Oh, there I mean, you go. You've got point. some unrenewable uh, hero points. You might as well. Right. Use them. Uh, well, that's just a, is that a D four, right? Smoke him if you got him, folks. D four D eight. Uh, it is I'm, a, I'm a D8. A D8. Okay. Uh, it's in, inspiration is the D8, or is it, hero point is the D8. Or know, sorry, uh, hero which. point is uh, yeah, D8. Yeah, it's D8. Okay. I'm gonna roll it. Okay. And uh, if I saw which was fantastic. It's a 15. I don't know why I even bothered. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, you should though. Whatever. 
27. Uh, 15, 27. I mean, we're looking for an average here, so that ups the average, which is important. Oh, oh we're oh, upping oh. average, so might okay. as well just... Yeah, this is a, uh, yeah. this is a longitudinal check, so it's welcome if you got them, folks. Okay. The longitudinal, it's mean, but... Wow. All right, that hey, nice. greatly increases the average. All right, so... It's both. Uh, yeah, that, that's actually really good. So... Uh, you guys spend a couple hours looking through this place, trying to find anything that might be useful, uh, lo locating these uh, tomes of keeping, um, as well as anything else that might be useful to you. And you do find stuff that actually ends up being useful to you, though you don't come across these tomes that Skivenskry is looking for. Um, oops, open this. You learn some information about the city itself. Um, let's see. Let's pick three of you. Extra girl, roll me a 1d20. Uh, Kylar, roll me a 1d20. And Anway, roll me a 1d20. Oh, God. I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so Anway, you uh, come across a tome uh, that talks about that there is an ancient obelisk that stands in the shadow of the spire of Ariel Arthas. Using this obelisk and a staff of power, it says one can potentially turn back time. Um... Okay, um, in, 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 where is this even at? Uh, the, so you know from your guide that the spire of Uriathiolus is that spire in the center of this city. Center, okay. Um, so uh, supposedly in the shadow of this place, there is some sort of device that when used with a staff of power could turn back time. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Flit. You learn that Yitherin's mages could extend their lives indefinitely by preserving their brains inside of jars. That seems pointless. But wait, oh, it's like in a outside jar. their body? So the body would be alive? No, it's like Futurama. It's no, more like, like they cut off their body. head? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, their body is left Just behind, the brain, I guess. and their brain is put in a jar. Uh, the rest is unclear um, what the exact oh, meaning huh. of that means, but that is what you're able to glean from this text. It's like so Walt if we Disney. find brains, they're alive <laughs> still. <one>? Okay. <laughs> Disney's frozen. Got it. I relate that to the group. Hmm. Um, oh, or Mars. <laughs> so, so the idea is, like, oh, hey, they used to put their brains in jars. That's fucked up. Yeah, what, really what are you going to do in a jar? Uh, like, I live forever, but I like, can't do anything. What's the point? I, I don't get it. <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's like, I think that's all I am, and that's yeah. all I can do. <laughs> it beats yeah. celebrating you know, your 31st birthday posthumously. Hylar, you learn... Um, shit, I just passed it. Damn it, where the fuck did it go? Uh, there it is. Uh, the wizards um, use human-like constructs called Majin as guards, workers, and valets. These constructs were created using very powerful magic lost to the the sands of time. Okay, so it was lost at the time that this place fell. Oh. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Is that fair to say? So, yes. I relay so that to the it's, it's a very it's powerful a Greek spell. scenario. Yeah, it's a, it's a very powerful spell that made these uh, incredibly complex constructs um, that are human-like, and they, they serve as guards, workers, and valets. Um, that's, those, that's those weird statues around the, the mm -hmm. animal I'd wager. Most definitely. Uh, could be. And then, Bill, you discover a book on something called a Chain Lightning Tournament. It describes a game in which two teams of six players compete against each other. To win, a team must eliminate the other team's player by hitting them with a three-inch diameter iron ball. A player struck with the thrown ball is eliminated and teleported to the sidelines, and the game ends when one of the player's teams has been eliminated. 
Um, when the game begins, an iron ball magically appears at rand in a random location on the arena floor, roughly equidistant between the two teams. Um, and it's basically done over these um, pillars of like arced lightning that. Oh yeah, that we saw that before. That was the first thing okay. we saw the arena. Not not just that. That explains why in the magic item section in the un. Uh, unspecified section is something called an iron ball, which is a simple weapon with a ridiculously long range. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I ran yes. into those like literally three days ago, and I was thinking I could a hundred percent just use that to recreate part seven of JoJo, <laughs> and no one could stop me. So now uh, that, that's so that little mystery uncovered. It's from this fucking book. That gives you a little something there, and then the very last thing um, that you fall, you find, uh, we'll say, X-ray girl stumbles across this one is a journal written by somebody named Thufius, one of the few mages who apparently survived Ytherin's crash and at some point had deposited his journal here in hopes that uh, someday someone might find it. Um, and it talks about how the city fell from the sky and the attempts of its doomed survivors to escape. The last entry reads... Uh, Iriolarthus is convinced that aid will come in time from Netheril. I am not so sure. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, doesn't the majority of them were, oh. Most of them were immortal, so yeah, there's no real time limit. Wait, so he was in this city when it crashed and survived and said help will come from... I thought this was Netheril. No, this is Yithrin, which is... So, Netheril and the Netherese were an empire that spanned all of Faerun a long time ago. Very oh, long so time ago. Oh, so this is like that And that empire collapsed and disappeared along with all of its secrets. Uh, so this is like... That's why this city was so important to the Brotherhood and uh, to... Um, okay, okay. Avarice and stuff, because this is like lost, ancient, powerful knowledge from this ancient empire of people. It's the only place that's actually been, like... Preserve it's probably like the hollow earth or some dumb bullshit like that uh mm. so i'm gonna read to you a little bit about uh so since you found this you've got some knowledge about the fall of ethrin so there's something here called the mythaler which isn't very well described in this journal but you have been told about it from others it's a device that could control the weather and also could be used to make this city fly and so, after using the Ytherin Mythaler to lift the Enclave of Ytherin to the sky, Irialarthus and his apprentices traveled to the frozen north in search of relics of Astoria, a bygone empire of magic-wielding giants that waged war against the dragons 40,000 years earlier. Uh, and after many fruitless excavations, they found a large stone spindle bearing a strange sigil on the bottom of the Sea of Moving Ice, and they brought it back to Ytherin for study. Um, and during one of their experiments, something went wrong. A flash of power from the spindle caused the Yithrin Mythaler to shut down, and which in turn caused the city itself to fall out of the sky and crash into the ice below. Um, and this is all being described in this journal from this guy's point of view. The inhabitants of Yithrin had only a few moments to react as the city fell, and Irialarthus conjured a doorway to a magical demiplane and stepped through it just in time. And as Yithrin settled into its icy grave, all magic in the city became undone for a brief time, as though something was trying to siphon it all away. Um, the demiplane expelled Iriel Arthas, and in that instant, trapped him in Yithrin, and something strange happened to this place that the, the writer of this journal couldn't quite explain. It was like they were in a demiplane, but it was alive. And Irialarthus searched the ruins of the city, uh, looking for something. Um, a spell book and some sort of other object that he coveted greatly, and he seemed fearful of the fact was missing. He did recover the spell book, but could not find the other object. Uh, and so as... Um, he went around looking for this. He did find some servants in stasis, including the person who wrote this journal. And they have spent their time since trying to get out of this city and out of their situation, praying that hope would come um, from the Netherese, and it never did. Hmm. I mean, what an idiot. He should have just left over the ice that we... <laughs> did they ever state their location? 
when they were waiting at? What's their stronghold? Mm. Nope, just here. Um, that they uh, they were in this city. Uh, he does describe that there was a um, a glacial ice that blocked all conventional routes of escape in attempts to leave by magic seemed to be thwarted from some reason, some sort of um, mysterious force destroying uh, or causing their spells to fail and they could not seem to escape. Oh, one more thing. He does describe something odd that he watched many of his fellow mages become mad and insane and slowly transform into strange creatures with one eye. God, I'll just like, the rest of the team. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, I think the Nothics know more than they know. Yeah. Sounds Do like you a... think we can turn them back? I know reincarnation. We might need to do a little bit of stabbing. They might come back as flies. They'll still be doing better than you. <laughs> Oi! I resemble that remark. I wonder if just do one than of I them. Am. Uh, well, is Chrysanth with us? How long do Ferris live? Yeah, Chrysanth, you look back, is currently drooling over another book, her slobber kind of tainting the pages as she munches on a nugget and hums to herself. Chrysanth, well, do you remember your yeah. life when you were a person and not a stain on reality? <laughs> <laughs> Come from. Oh, I've had a long wow. day. My eyes hurt for all the reading. Stain on. <laughs> wow. I'd have said way worse to these guys. Don't worry. Just I'm sitting there eat, trying to not trying read, to, eating the nugget. over all the paper. Yeah, but where do the nuggets come from? I don't want to know. I never want to know where they come from. I'm still a person. Mm. You mean? Before you took this you body. To you seem to have experienced some mutation. She Would looks like down at her body, and she's like, What is wrong with my body? <sighs> Nothing's oh, wrong, but I mean, you... she saying she's a 10? <laughs> a... Oh my god. Were you a different creature before you became this creature? <laughs> she seems to think really hard. No! <laughs> hmm. Well, oh, that was a lot magic. of help. What was the name of the chap who uh, wrote this this uh, little uh, journal? Uh, Thufius. Uh, you know the I'll name it Thufius. In I'll, I've got. I've got. I keep getting. It. I've got telepathy. I can really everything to it. Yeah. Thufius. Um. No, Chrysanth does not know Thufius. Mm. Did you know someone who did? A friend of a friend? No. No, 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 no. Is that, can I roll insight if that's a, uh, an actual no, or if that's a my brain is attempting not to remember no? Insight sounds good. Oh, I don't know why I have to do that because I've got dog shit for insight, but here we go. <laughs> what about this book that Let this uh, Arcanaloth is looking for? Do you know where it could be, Kristen? Uh, you think uh, she genuinely can't remember, Bill. And X-Ray Girl, uh, you asked Chrysanth about mm. the Tomes of Keeping, or the Books of Keeping. Books um, of Keeping. She looks down at the book she's looking at and goes and holds it up. It is not a okay. tome keeping. That's how I'm getting the terms of reincarnating this bitch. So I, I kind of take the book I'm sorry. and sort of just wipe off the goo that has been dribbled onto the page. And I hand it, I hand it to Kiora who can read the language. Like, is this is this anything? Or, or is it just like a nugget recipe or something? <laughs> Uh, Kiora reads it and says it's a self-help book. This chapter is on the benefits of taking cold showers instead of hot ones in the morning. 
Oh. Rosie didn't have the 51 different herbs and spices. <laughs> and it back to <laughs> Ezra. Ezra will look at the elf, uh, <laughs> the elfling. Yeah. See, I told you, cold showers are better. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is ancient knowledge, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Pass down through fry green blood. As I like make a like a flexing motion. How would we? This is a whole other question now of like how to try and reverse this curse, if that is what it is. Uh, I don't know if that would be easier than trying to find this book. It seems like it would be easier yeah. if, the, if, if, if ooh, these... Ooh, ooh, ooh. The title of the book is Dragon Noodle Soup for the Soul. Uh, there you go. Uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, there you go. Dragon Noodle Soup does sound like it would be fantastic, doesn't it? I will not be part of this soup! Even, <laughs> even if it's just breathing! I'm not going to bathe in your food! God. Um, somebody asked me a question, or were you starting to answer me a question? Answer me a question. I'll say what, what, one thing I oh. as an idea that kind of cropped up in my brain is, uh, could we convince the Arcana Loth that the actual book is in the main tower and then thus trick him into killing himself against the defense system? Maybe. There's always room for deception checks. The mm hmm. This book is fairly ambiguous. It does make it sound like they were all holding out in one place. And if I were holding out, I'd probably bring the big book of Yugoloth names with me. Now, here's a question. Can we forge a section to back up our claim? Or find something that is I mean, we tangentially might suggest it? Um... Alternately, the elf could, has a that? massively powerful social skill and can just lock yes. your ass off. Yeah, I can... Elf I can... Flies. As per usual, we'll get us to make <laughs> I, I'm assuming all this is telepathic. Yeah, well, he, he can't even yes. speak, so it's always I, telepathic. I can't talk normally. I don't oh, have okay. a tongue. Right. I've got big, weird, chittering, like, like fangs for a mouth. So, a bit like a blender. Like, telepathically, I, I will suggest that if we are going to do that, then it should be in an area that you're willing to fight them, just in case this all goes horribly wrong. Ezra will look at you as if to say, there's a place I wouldn't fight someone. <laughs> <laughs> More advantageous than our current location. That's the spirit. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, anything that you want to, I can try to persuade them. Uh, I can also use compulsion or hypnotic pattern. There's all kinds of stuff My I can do. My concern is that brain. an Arcanoloth being a heavily, ma basically a yeah. wizard, a demon yeah. or was it Damon? Yeah. Equivalent. It might be someone who's really resilient to it. It might right. actually be straight up immune to charm. It... But lies, lies are universal. You can't yeah, yeah, yeah. be immune to lies. Yeah, you'd probably do really well on the wisdom saving throw against compulsion. You, but yeah. You literally can't roll below a eleven. No, so. I can't. So way. <laughs> Your worst possible roll is better than probably my best. <laughs> And I managed to talk a tree into getting wood. So who knows? <laughs> it's, it seems like something a tree would have a lot of, though. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, go on, take That's pretty fair. And then yeah. else. <laughs> it's only going to grow back. Well, he's a, well, he's a wizard. <laughs> Mental illness g grows on him like wood. <laughs> so. Mm. so I guess we're going to corner we could him. Keep looking, we could try looking more. But we kind of tend to okay. Okay, before we, before we continue, with what we have learned from the various books we've perused, can we try to figure out what these symbols mean? Oh yeah, any kind of the, the system of the, organization, like yeah, the Dewey De the fucking their version uh, of the Dewey Decimal System, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of a meme or pun name for it, but I can't think of one. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't honestly seem to help a lot um, in terms of trying to figure out this system. Every time you think you figured out a pattern, it doesn't quite match up when you find another section that also has uh, that symbol. And you feel like this may have been a... Uh, intentional? A, a skilled system, uh, perhaps, mm. in order to keep the librarians of this place, the uh, custodians of it, in a position of... Um, control or power over the stuff so that not just anybody could walk in and understand where to find these fonts of knowledge immediately without their help. 
Uh, yes, the old, uh, there's two methods of uh, keeping people in power. There is the Discord method of keeping all the wizards in one place, fat and sedentary, and there's the uh, the other method of keeping the very much you higher up in power by organizational skills alone. Uh, but, it, uh, is there any of the... There's like the statues from the, the Tower of Insanity. Is there any of those in the location? Because we <laughs> thought at one point... <laughs> Forty Vikings yeah, and call it the Dewey Nethral system. <laughs> there you go. Works. I was looking there fantastic. See, this is why you put it to the crowd because they always have better good. ideas. Than that's See? pretty damn good. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that one. That just caught me off guard. Um, what were you saying? Is there, is, there was statues in the Tower of Insanity. Is there any of those in here? Because we thought they may be like servants. Right. Oh, you don't see any of those statues here. In fact. Hmm. Any remnants of them? Not that you currently see, no. In which case, we're back to. Well, we we either leave or we look to a place to lie to this creature. Uh. Do you know, we've not found it yet. It might actually be in the main tower. <laughs> well, it it could literally be anywhere in the city. Yeah. And we have no better way of searching well, this place, okay. so they, we're literally at a point where we either leave or do something with them. They, they've, under, they've undergone a major catastrophic event, and they are everyone with their sanity intact has moved to the main tower to protect themselves. So I'm, I'm inclined to believe that it would be in the main tower in reality. So lying about it would be really easy because it's the truth. Well, we can. Wouldn't just get him to go like a eviscerate himself, <laughs> walking into the. Well, no, I mean that leaves. That, if he was that bright, he would have found that. That leaves two right. options then. You either tell him that it's in there, which would be a lie, or you tell him that you think it's in there, which isn't. I, I can go either one. It, 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 we have it, we have reason to believe, based on what we know so far, that it is in the main tower. But we will continue looking for you. That way, we maintain our usefulness, thus keeping us alive, mm -hmm. and ma and make him put himself in a dangerous situation, which you know keeps him dead. Best of both worlds. And we could give him the information about how this city collapsed, mm -hmm. as like evidence well, that we found of a reason why we think it's and that we've been working. Yes, that's the trick in life: always look like you're busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got me through my job sure for seven is. years. It hasn't <laughs> failed me yet. Look busy. If you're sitting down, enough. you'll be given work. <laughs> exactly. Okay then, so I guess we go looking for him. Mm. Or we ask the little guy if he's got any way to signal his master. True. <laughs> this is where we find out he can read minds. <laughs> but we're not uh, lying. No. no. I do not. Master will find us. Well, so we room. let's keep wait searching then. Here? I guess so. Um, so you guys go looking for him. That's fine. Um, give me investigation checks. These are individual checks. Right, okay. Uh, I've been rolling really well on investigation today. I don't know what's up. <laughs> I only have a plus three. Mind you, I have plus three to down everything because all my stats are... You know, just add a... Wow. Um, Excellent. All right. Egg. So that is uh, as you guys are looking around. This is a toss up. Who has the higher core stat? X-ray girl. All right. Uh, X-ray girl. Uh, you guys are kind of fanning out through the library, trying to find uh, Skiv and Scraw. Now, we're also kind of, you know, cursorily like looking at the shelves a little bit, just in case you happen to come across these uh, books of keeping. Um, and you come around one of the the aisleways, and you're looking through the books and kind of thumbing your fingers along it. When your fingers come across some strange substance, like something has been grown over the books and the shelves themselves. Uh, a strange, almost uh, chitinous material. Uh, and your eyes follow it, and it seems to almost be like this creep that goes down into the, the aisle itself. And sitting in the middle of this creep 
are a cluster of strange gelatin looking sex, sex almost like eggs they look like and they're Ugh. they're pulsating Whoa. slightly Ugh. it's the face hook it's all it's like me. <laughs> uh and oh, there no, is not again. oh no on these gelatin gooey looking <clears throat> sacks there's like a little thin coat of almost looks like white fuzz or fur on the outsides um and they start stirring as your presence no. becomes mm. known to them no um and you start to kind of like back away maybe like what is this and then from the ceiling oh, please say it burst open <laughs> from the ceiling unfurls a large strange chitinous but also furry looking creature something you could only describe as a yeti morph and <laughs> wow i see what you did there okay <laughs> the egg in front of you <laughs> peels back and a strange crab-like creature with a yeti face peeks out <laughs> and launches at your face Oh no. And that. Kylo laughs. laughs. That is where we are going to wrap the session for tonight. Um, I hate so you. Chat. We started with gagging, we ended with gagging. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Uh, you so, rolled for it. I didn't you... know that's what I was gonna roll for. God dang it! You need to roll less. I know. For the no. one time, I actually needed to roll crappy. <laughs> you did well. You did so well. well it wouldn't have worked against so me well. because it's like, okay, let's have a brood parasite off. Let's see. Who <laughs> he goes down your mouth. I don't have one. <laughs> in two weeks. In two weeks, uh, we will. Uh, You'll get to experience the Yeti morph, and uh, we'll find out if uh, Flit's going to end up with a uh, a Yeti Ace chest burster. Mm. That'll be fun. Um, and that is going to be a multi-tiered fight in the library, ladies and gentlemen. So, chat, you got two weeks to save your pennies. Every hundred dollars unlocks another tier of this fight, and it's going to be epic. Um, <laughs> so, it's a I trauma center boss fight. I hope you're ready. <laughs> Um, I'm not ready. I hate you. <laughs> uh, I'm glad it was you. If it had to be anybody, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> he, he really just wants to kill me. I, honestly. Yeah, I if I'm just come feeling back as a, space clown. a little fiendish, okay? <laughs> Since you started off this episode talking about me liking butt stuff, all right? So I, I <laughs> just a little... And yeah. you said it so we can isolate the clip. I mean, you say, I like butt stuff. God damn it. No, you said it. Shit. I know. I, 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 I lean no, into it way more. Well. I'll be like, yeah, wow. sure, why not? Is this going to end up being, you do it. You just, just own it. Is this going to be one of those, uh, what are they called, blurps or something? Is that going to be one of your... Yes. Uh, God. Psychotic Mongoose, are you here? <laughs> no, no, he's not. Psychotic Mongoose is not here. Oh shit, Psychotic Mongoose is here. Go away, Psychotic Mongoose. Uh, uh, I see it in the chat. Uh, That's what you think. Uh, she's always here. Hi. God damn it. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> uh, um, Zero sevens in chat for Bill Paxton. God damn it. He's a real one. He was a real one. That made me sad. Um. This Death Wish coffee is going to be the end of me. Uh, but it was a great <laughs> episode, guys. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, and know. hey, we're advancing the plot slowly but surely. And uh, you guys keep picking up pets and getting them killed. So let's hope this penguin doesn't meet the same fate, shall we? Um, Depends if the penguin is on our side. Yeah, we'll true. Go. And useful. <laughs> if something happens to this penguin, I'm killing you all. God damn it, psychotic mongoose. Uh, um, <laughs> I hate it. All thank right, you, so psychotic. Let's go around <laughs> and uh, let them know where you'll be found, what you'll be up to, and then tag who you like. And we'll start with X-Ray Girl today. Ooh, I am going to be in Vegas next week. So there are going to be a couple of uh, live streams in Vegas, probably at the meetups. So if you are feeling FOMO, you can find that probably Nerd Erotic Live or on X-Ray Girl. Um, and tonight I'll play a game. Uh, probably Dragon's Dogma. So, yeah, that's it Based. for me. Uh, oh, and Saucy Saturdays, we're going to play Helldivers uh, a little earlier before that, I believe 4.30 Eastern, and then uh, the show is at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, 
That's mm-hmm. what this for real, which I tag. Uh, yeah, for the rest of the week, uh, I'm going to do uh, Disney with the latest. <laughs> Brother, it, it was weird because they won and it was also horrible at the same time. So that's going to be interesting to cover with Bob Iger's comments that you just don't know what woke means. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a really intelligent debate he had with people. Um, I'm also going to be freeing the universe from the automaton filth uh, as they deserve. Um, <laughs> and then ho- hopefully, by the time we come back from Le- Vegas, hopefully they'll have released the Illuminates. They probably won't, but I hope they do. And uh, But with that, uh, Bill and his Windows 10 install. <laughs> we should be so lucky. And I think the early <laughs> days for the Illuminate. I'm still on the Windows 7. I but can't. We're, we're, I'm, I'm penciled in for next week. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm okay. I am available on Tuesdays over on Broken Crown. Every now and then on Wednesdays in Broken Crown as a as a ringer kind of guest when Scrump's not on. And uh Who has become basically the, the third co host. <laughs> yeah. Once again, Bill finds himself out of a fucking job <laughs> on his own fucking channel. Uh but uh if you ever need to see the backlog of our our, our games, uh you can find it over on Rich was eighty nine. It's a very good friend of mine and an uh, excellent backlog of all of our Pathfinder first edition games and our only war and other 40k games. And I'll pass over to me, <laughs> Uh Yeah, uh, so I'll, again, I'll be in Vegas. Uh, I'm working on a massive video about, um, it's related to the Gamer 82 stuff, but it's about all of the research that um, has been done over the last 30 years on video games, aggression, violence, toxic gamer stuff. Um, it is my area of expertise. I've just never done a video on it because it is like my area of expertise in terms of research. I will be editing that. I'll be out of the country for, well, I'll be away from here for a month. <laughs> Excellent, Bill. Lovely. Um, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be away for a month, so I'll be editing the whole time, not just while in Vegas, but I'll also, um, I'll be on Tim Pool Show on the 17th of uh this month and then i'll be on lotus eaters on the first of may so it's a a whole big thing for like a whole month but then yeah yeah so sometime in that time there'll be a gamergate uh, retrospective slash research video yeah <laughs> and uh, that's it yeah i think that was everyone so it comes back to me mm-hmm. um so thank you all for tuning in i am arud i uh, head of geeks and gamers tabletop you can of course find me here with these crazy folks uh, on Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, or Secrets of the Frost Maiden on Thursdays. Uh, later tonight, March of the Dragon Queen uh, will be our fifth edition module turned into um, Savage Worlds uh, crossover uh, to show you how you can take a system uh, from a company you don't like and convert it to a system you do like and still enjoy the lore you love. We're having a good time over there as well. Um, and then if you want to see me as a player, Mommy's Mask, I'm currently playing more to every Friday night. Uh, you may not know this, but we also have a second channel. Uh, Sevi and I are co-owners of this channel called Moon Skull. Uh, if you are a fan of the paranormal, horror, the sci-fi, and the unexplained, you will like this channel. We tell scary stories, including one from Hayden75. If you're familiar with Hayden, uh, he submitted a scary story, and we did a video on it, uh, narrated it, and put Ooh. art to it and everything. I, um, I remember he sent me one. It was really, 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 really creepy. Was it really was it about the crazy. the door seeing through the the door through some astral projection? Does that sound familiar? Yes, yes. Yeah, he we um, narrated that and turned it into a video. So uh, you can go see that story there, yeah. uh, as well as watch us play scary games and uh, go explore live haunted locations. We are getting some equipment for Dallas to go do some of that, by the way. Um, cool. So that that channel is going to be all about that. Plus, we have a few if you like tabletop, and I think you do because you're here. We have some exclusive tabletop <laughs> shows that match those themes over there, including Star Wars. We have a Star Wars actual play every saturday night um and we have call of cthulhu coming up that'll be on monday nights we'll be announcing uh the official start you guys already did the character creation uh that's going to be a lot of fun so we'd love to see you over there we love seeing you here thank you for all of your support and getting us to dallas you crazy chat bastards and i will see you here in just a moment for a super chat catch up and we will talk to you later bye guys bye
Hello, hello, chat bastards. It's that time. After every Frost Maiden stream, where we have a little one on one, you and I. And uh, I know you very much look forward to this. It's your favorite part of every show. Uh, you crave the one on one Erudai attention, and I'm here to give it to you, you chat bastards. You. Uh, so, Super Chat Catch-Up hasn't been terribly busy as of late, uh, in large part because we were fundraising for Dallas, and, uh, you guys were extremely generous on that, and I cannot, again, thank you enough for your support. Um, but today, we had quite a few Super Chats, and, uh, I am very excited to go through them, uh, and maybe answer some questions along the way, so if you have any questions, uh, this is a good time to put them into chat and, uh, see what you, what you got for me. But let me go in here and switch it over to the funding view for chat. Um, oh, the Yeti fight's going to be great. Are you guys excited for the uh, Yeti morph? I'm trying to get some art done for it. We'll see if uh, I can make that happen. Um, might not have enough time. I'm trying to get in. I need to get a hold of the person who did the um, art for the um, the Yetitor, the, the Yeti uh, Predator. Uh, see if they can if they can produce this, but might not have enough time. We will see. Uh, oops, that was the wrong one. Didn't mean to do that. Um, oops, didn't mean to do that either. I can spell, I swear. All right, so starting off the show with a hundred dollars, we had Dragon Noodle Soup. Gaming said, Miracle for the party, but you have to try and convince Quarter Black to come back and play as the not doppelganger Chadwick for a game. Still get Miracle if he declines. I will certainly reach out to him. Um, I have something else special planned as well once the show concludes that I'm working on as well. So I'm going to see how many of these faces I can, uh, I can get back in front of you at some point. Um, the real problem is he literally left this show specifically because he had a Thursday conflict. Um, so uh, it could be difficult, I will say, uh, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see what I can do. And then Dragon Little Soup Gaming sent $1.49 uh, to buy me a hot dog, and that resulted in something I hope was not clipped. Uh, and an awkward feller became a member for 14 months at the Rare Tier and says, Say it a lot, but you guys really have made Thursdays, previously Mondays, my favorite days of the week, thanks to the whole cast and the mods. Well, thank you, awkward feller. I'm glad that we could make an awkward feller like you have a wonderful time watching our show and that we bring you such joy. That's what we're here to do. We want to entertain. Uh, certainly what I want to do. And... Thank you for being a rare tier. That makes you a rare individual. <coughs> and then, <coughs> excuse me, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming gifted 10 Geeks and Gamers tabletop memberships. Badass. Thank you, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. Um, and then the DCV Titan for two Canadian dollars. That's X-Ray Girl money. Conveniently enough says, didn't think X-Ray Girl had a gag reflex. Well, none of us did, to be honest with you, but I was polite enough at least not to call her out on it while we were on stream. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $5 says, by the way, I put AI art and gilded for Bill and Comics. True. And we did give them uh, some inspiration for that. So they will definitely put that into good use. Um... Uh, let's see. And then Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $40 says X-Ray and Disparu, giving them some love as well. And then Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $20 says Uwudai. Hmm. Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming uh, gives a miracle for the Frogman. I guess that's me. Uh, for $100. Thank you, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. I certainly will need that. Uh, and then Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $20, Hero Point for Chrysanth. Well, Chrysanth is very appreciative. She's, uh, you know, she's just a little lowly Nothic eating her little nuggies and just gurgling her way through life and just trying to enjoy the splendors of eating the flesh of others and using that magic mouth of hers uh, to send messages um, to people that she would like to send very intimate messages too. Uh, so giving her that hero point will probably save her in the long run. And she does need saving, let me tell you. Uh, and then Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $10 says, wait, where's my NPC? I am a fend. Well, 
You didn't get an NPC, but you did get a book, Dragon Noodle Soup <laughs> for the Soul. Uh, somebody should totally meme that. And then Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $20, hero point for the walrus. If he's alive, he'll be appreciative. If he's dead, well, his corpse thanks you. And Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $20, say Uwudai in the voice. I did. I hope you enjoyed that. Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $10, Uwudai, 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 Triple Frogs. Wow. Just wow. Uh, I don't understand. Why am I evil, Chrysanth? I am just reading Super Chats from my fans and our viewers. I don't understand why that would upset you. Uh, maybe you can explain. I am behaving. I am behaving. Um, all right, let's see. Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $20. Disparu gets a hero point. Disparu is a ferret. We turned him into a ferret. Wonderful. And then the Mystery 809, a member for four months at the Uncommon Tier, making him an uncommon individual, says, Did they collect any sap when they took the stick? No. No, they didn't. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's a layered insult in there somehow. And I'm not entirely sure if there is. I'm just going to assume it's an innocent question. Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. Oh, I don't have babysitters, Chrysanth. Really? Really? First off, I'm behaving and I don't need babysitters. Uh, and second off, I don't have babysitters. Um, shut up, Chrysanth. God damn it. Um, did they? Okay. Uh, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $10. I think a lot of what content wishes it was anime. Where they turn historical figures into women, but the content they make isn't outrageous enough for that. A fair point. Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. I'm sure uh, lots of woke content does indeed wish it was anime because it's very successful right now and they are not. DCV Titan for two Canadian dollars says penguin in a leather harness and a gimp mask. Uh, he didn't have a mask, but uh, the, the leather harness was definitely there. Um, very animated and, shall we say, uh, eccentric individual, uh, that, uh, that Arkanaloth was, I will say. Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming for $20 says, for Rudai's OC, original character, no. That was not, that is in the module. I did not make Given Scraw. The Horror Host for $20, a penguin in a leather harness led around by a fox. What did Chris Perkins mean by this? Villain point for a Rudai. Yeah, Chris Perkins has something to answer for, I would say. For sure. Um, and then Sai becomes a member for five months of the rare tier, making him a rare individual, and says, Just had a thought for Moonskull. Have you ever thought of doing a Vampire the Masquerade show? Hope all is well with your Muppetosis. Well, Sai, I'm happy to report that Muppetosis doesn't exist, so you have nothing to worry about in regards to my Muppetosis, because... Well, I can't have a status if it's not a thing. Your concern is noted. And it's funny that you mentioned that. If you did happen to watch the roadmap to 2024, uh, you would know that we got a lot of things coming down the pipe for both channels. Um, if you haven't, you should go watch it because there's a lot of cool stuff uh, announced there um, that you'll probably be interested to know. Uh, but one of them is that during the hiatus for this show, because when this show ends, I'm going to take a small break. Uh -huh. This is a long campaign, and we've been running it a long time, and I need a little bit of a mental breather when this show's done before I can kind of recollect myself and recollect myself and um, and uh, start spinning up the, the next thing. Uh, and during that hiatus, Epic Mike is going to be running a werewolf campaign right here on this channel that will be dual streamed with Moonskull. So it's going to be a, a double channel feature event uh, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, undetermined if I'm going to be a player in that campaign or just take a total break altogether during that time. Um, but it'll be in this same time slot and um, you guys will certainly have a lot of fun with that. And depending on the reception on that, who knows, maybe Moonskull could get a full-fledged werewolf or vampire campaign. Uh, the one that Mike will be running, though, is going to be sort of like a mini, a mini campaign. It'll be um, uh, sort of a series of uh, uh, episodes that are a little collective adventure to run some players through. Um, so there you go. There you go. Um, delete Mort. Can't delete Mort. Mort is a wonderful character. He is a fan favorite at that. I love Mort. Mort is a really good character. I don't know why anybody has anything against the man. He's done nothing wrong to any of you. Uh, seems kind of rude to want to delete him. Um, 
Epic Rude High is going to have to receive the insults uh, two-ish years. I don't know what that was. In. I got to look, Brimstone, what you said that to. Two-ish years to what? Uh, dang it, Gino. Just give her some <laughs> morphine to get her through to the wedding. Oh, episode 69 is going to be so good on Mummy's Mask. You see, because the Nugget herself, Chrysanth, is uh, going to be a guest in that episode. And in lore, she is married to Mort. So Chrysanth by also the name of Chrysanth in this uh, universe. He's married to Mort and is his devoted, loving wife, who is happy to be in an open marriage and allow him to go around Osirian just sort of uh, spreading his seed, if you will. She's just happy when he comes home to her. Uh, so it's going to be great seeing her in that episode and getting to, to let her test her role-playing chops uh, as Mort's wife and lover. And perhaps we'll even cover their honeymoon, which consisted of 36 days and nights of passion between them. Who knows? Who knows? Certainly, it'll be an episode to remember. Um... Oh, right, 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 right. I don't like the way you said that, Chrysanth. I don't know what you're saying there, Chrysanth, but it better not be what I think it is. You better not. Um, long as she doesn't speak with a gargle. No, that's this Chrysanth. This Chrysanth speaks with a gargle. Uh, why would you want to kill more Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming? He is a good character. I love Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. Or, I mean, uh, Mort, not Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. I don't know why you would hate Mort. That seems very strange. Very strange indeed. Um, I'm pretty sure what the Queen shirts are supposed to be, your babysitters. I hate the Queen shirts so much. They always ruin my fun. Um, I made you a Yeti Crab Xenomorph. I might end up having to use that. I really wanted it to match the art style of the other ones, though. Since the other guy did all the other Yetis, I was hoping he'd be able to do this one, too. But I haven't spoke to him in a while, so I don't know. I'd have to reach out and be sh to be sure. Um, <sighs> Chrysanth is just trying to roast me over and over and over again. Um... All right, I think I caught up to all the questions there, so let me go back to the bottom. Uh, okay. Why are you trying to kill Mort, Michaela? We had a deal already, and Mort was not going to die. He doesn't deserve to die. He's a good person. Just serving his goddess to the best of his ability. Why would you wish a terrible fate upon poor Mort, who's done nothing to anyone except for spread his love in all its various forms, and sometimes all over them across Assyrian? Uh, I don't get it. He's done nothing wrong to anyone. In fact, you guys have been openly punishing Falister for like 50 episodes almost now. You think you'd be on board with Mort giving Falister a little extra punishment. You guys sure enjoyed it when you were doing it. Why not let Mort have his fun? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, I, I do. I do love you, Dragon Noodle Soup Gaming. You are fantastic and such a strong supporter. Thank you. Um... Can we run Cthulhu? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, oh, you mean can we run it? It is going to be a Moonskull. Uh, actually, Moss, uh, one of the players in March of the Dragon Queen tonight, is running Call of Cthulhu. And we just did character creation on that. So if you go over to Moonskull, you can watch the character creation and, and get a sense of the cast that is uh, coming your way. Nomi's going to be on there, too. She was uh, she dropped in on the Moonskull stream last night. Surprise guest. Um so uh, that would uh, that would be cool uh, if you go check that out. I think you'll be very happy. We're going to be announcing the date of that show soon. I'm waiting on some of the artwork to come in before we officially drop that date because we want to make sure the timing lines up correctly with the artwork. Uh, the horror host for five dollars says if you do play in the werewolf game, roll a red talon ragabash. It would be worth it just for Mike's reaction. I don't know what that means, but I will say it to him and see what he says. So I played Vampire once upon a time, and uh, I really like the Malkavians. So I don't know if there's something equivalent to that in a werewolf, uh, but uh, that would probably be what I would be interested in. But I don't know if it will give a reaction on a mic. I might just say Red Talon Ragabosh and go with whatever the hell that is. 
uh, just to just to see what he does. Um, he's a farming implement. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, let's see. Mort is canon in all games, Seeker of the Moon. Interesting that you bring that up. Uh, that was unlocked as one of the mini goals. Mort is in every universe, in every game that we will ever run. At some point, Mort will be ran across and maybe ran through or maybe running through the players. We shall see. Um, let's see. Oh, it's kind of like a rogue class. Okay, okay. I could be down with that. I could be down. Oh, Sevi is most definitely uh, a Ventru. She's definitely a Ventru. Uh, she, I guessed that before she even told me, but then she affirmed it when she told me that she really liked the domination magic and being able to control people's minds and shit. I was like, yep. Yep. I knew it. I knew it. Um... Good news, Ragabash is kind of like the Malkavian for Werewolf. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I am down for it. I'm down for it. Then I will run that by him if I choose to be a player in that. Maybe I'll be like an in and out player. I don't know if I I don't know if I'll do it full time. I'm torn because I do like being a player. But man, I was really kind of looking for that little mental reset period while I work on the next stream. So I got to think about it. Um, uh, go back and forth on that. Um, I think that's all I got for you, you chat bastards. Um, unless you got any questions for me, I usually hang out till about 4.30. If you got some last minute questions for me or comments or concerns or things that uh, perhaps you're wondering about, they could be anything, by the way. They could be stream related, uh, show related, channel related, personally related. Uh, you could ask about the deepest, darkest secrets of my soul. And so long as it's, uh, you know, not um, putting somebody out there that I care about in harm's way, uh, I'll be happy to answer it to the best of my ability. Um, I have a question. Why does Death Wish bring out your fiend plural? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what... I don't see the connection. I'm just taking your guys' word for it. So that's sort of... Uh, what you would have to, that's a question you're going to answer for me. I don't know. I, I just drank the coffee and I feel like I am my normal day to day self. But you guys swear up and down that it makes me more evil or something, more of a fiend. Uh, so maybe you could tell me why Death Wish Coffee brings that out of me. Bruja would definitely be her backup. Uh, if she can't, if she can't dominate their minds and uh, make them do her bidding, then beating them to death is a very close second. Um, can you sing when you're evil uh, by Voltaire for karaoke? Uh, well, I'm not in charge of that set list. That is a Sevi uh, ran uh, aspect of that stream. So. You'd have to, you can submit it to the Queen Shirts um, and they can run that to Sevi and she will add it to her list. And eventually she's going to take all these suggestions that you guys give her and narrow it down to like 20 or so songs uh, that can then be chosen by chat during a, sort of like a catalog thing during the stream itself. Um, so there you go. Beat the crap out of them does fit Sevi too. I, I agree with that. Chrysanth says, I always know when you had coffee. You do seem to call it, which is the only reason I think there could be anything to this theory of yours. I don't see it, but you seem to know every time that I've had the coffee. So maybe there's a truth to it that I'm just not seeing because I am looking from the house outwards and not looking uh, from the outside in. Um, that's very possible. It's very possible. Elemental MJ, when running your DM agency with a full clientele, did you ever charge more than $35 a session? Yes, but very rarely. Uh, so it's usually $35 a game um, for each player uh, on my normal campaigns. But um, every now and then I'll run special events, and the events take a lot more work, a lot more coordination, and a lot more assets, and... They're usually like one to two session things. And so all that planning and work does kind of need to be worth my while. So for those, I will usually charge a little bit more. Uh, they also tend to be longer experiences too. Uh, so instead of the usual three hours, I tend to be like four to six hours. So 
yeah, the rate goes up a little bit more, but you, you get more of a unique experience out of it. For example, I ran a campaign one time that required five DMs uh, and I had to be the central DM and there were four satellite DMs and they each had their own table of about six people. And uh, it was a mega dungeon, like a super dungeon where all four teams of players were in different parts of the dungeon trying to get to one central goal. And then at the end was sort of like a raid boss kind of situation where they had to fight one mega creature um, in a very complicated puzzle type fight uh, that culminated at the end. So that was really cool, but it required a lot of organization and I also had to pay out those DMs. Uh, so obviously the rate was much higher there. Um, but everybody who walked away from that had an incredibly good time and said it was well worth their, their money. So there you go. Um, shut up, Chris Anth. Shh. Shh. Uh, I do, don't like it when you say stuff like that. Um, I'm lying through my teeth. Your tears are all the pay I'll ever need. No, oh, that's I do. I do enjoy that as well. By the way, I do have a uh, I don't advertise this much because it is a little bit e-girlish and I feel kind of weird most of the time. But people have asked me for it multiple times. So I did make a wish list. If you go to Gilded, um, there is a wish list in my links section that you can go to that's got stuff on there that I think would be cool to have. They're mostly shirts like these. Uh, so if you'd like to see a bigger variety of these, I put a whole bunch of uh, Hawaiian style shirts that are kind of nerdy in nature on there uh, to give you guys a bit more of a variety. Um, I put a couple like little D&D statue miniature things on there as well as a, this is what reminded me of that. There's a mug on there. It's really cool. It's probably the thing I like the most on that list right now. Uh, it's a it's a handmade wooden mug uh, that says tears of my players on it. Uh, it's made for DMs and uh, that would be really, really fucking cool to have. Um, not, I don't really push that very often because I still feel kind of weird about it if I'm being honest, but uh, multiple people asked me if I would make one. So I did. Uh, so if you chat bastards feel like indulging it, go ahead. Um, no, Chrysanth, you cannot sleep. You cannot sleep. Oh, that's a good point, horror host. Uh, although I don't know if I would say, hmm. Is Sevi pointless cruel, or is she cruel with a point? The point is self-serving. She's self-serving cruel, I would say. Um, but I could kind of see Zemitsi being uh, being an option. Shut up, Chrysanth. Quit dropping that emoji. Um, but yeah, so, so an example of Sevi cruelty outside of what you see done to me on channel. Uh, I have her in several of my private games and she was in an Avernus campaign. And there was this, um, this character they found in this like prison who wanted to be free. And she did all these like insight checks to try to see if she could trust this person to let them out, whatever. Um, and so he offered a deal. I'll give you this information if you let me out. And uh, she was like, she convinced him with a persuasion role. And um, I think it actually ended up being a uh, deception role. Um, there will be Dungeon Daddy merch, by the way, that is coming. Uh, I saw that comment there. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so she convinces this guy, I'll, all right, tell me the information first as a sign of good faith and I'll let you out of this prison. And the guy gets persuaded by her, her role and he gives her this information and she goes, hmm, that's good. And then without saying another word, her character just turns and walks away. And the guy's like, what? wait, you said you're going to let me out. He's like pounding on the side of the prison. And he's like, please let me out. And she stops and she just turns, looks over her shoulder and like smirks and then says, no, I like you where you are, because if I need more information, I know exactly where to find you. And then she just turned and walked away and left him there. That is the kind of cruelty that you get from Sevi. She is evil. So evil. Um, that is the it, there's a purpose behind it, but it, it's it's cruel. Um Let's see. I wouldn't buy this stuff. There'll definitely be some Mort merch. Uh, we've been writing down different Mort quotes, and so there'll probably be some shirts and mouse pads and things like that that got Mort quotes on it with his art uh, that'll be coming forth. Uh, that's been asked for. There's going to be a Chat Bastards line. Uh, so we're going to have kind of like two tiers of, of stuff. We're going to have what I call our like really like uh, series-based high-quality merch that's going to have money really invested into the design, sort of like Cult of Sevi. Uh, so it's going to be the equivalent to the Cult of Sevi merch that's going to be coming out. That is going to be the Chat Bastards line. 
Uh, it's going to be basically about you guys, and it's going to be uh, there's going to be a Chet Bastard's uh, art piece on it, um, as well as things like that uh, that are going to go with it. There's going to be a Mort line that's going to be more of our uh, our lower tier is not the right word, but it's not going to be as intense on the artwork. It's just going to have Mort's featured artwork uh, with some quotes and things like that. A little bit simpler, uh, but still fun uh, to have. Um, and there was a request for a, a fed line, but I don't know if we're going to do a fed line. Uh, there's also a top secret line coming um, that might have something to do with little fried morsels of meat, perhaps. I, I don't know what the word for that is. Um, oh, man, is it um, chicken balls? No, it's not chicken balls. Is it uh, uh, is it chicken tips? No, it's not chicken tips. Mm. I, I don't know what the word is, but some sort of merch line related to whatever a morsel of chicken meat might be. Uh, so we'll see if that uh, comes out soon. Um, but yeah, so lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Are you trying to incorporate the agency style here, like training DMs, perhaps create a program to improve DM skills? That is something that's been requested. I just haven't had the time to do it. But yes, a, um, I have considered adding for um, potential professional DMs. So I, I thought about doing just a DMing advice series in general. And then for people who want to be pro DMs, if you are a member of the channel, you'd have access to pro DM training, how to be a pay to DM and be successful. Uh, the tools that you would need, things that uh, I had to learn the hard way uh, over the last seven years uh, that you would be able to know right off the bat and that would help you be successful uh, in recruiting players to your games and being slowly able to, to work your way up to, to rates like mine and uh, be successful in that arena. Uh, I just haven't had the time to do it. Uh, it's a problem. My schedule is so damn packed. Uh, I feel like sometimes I don't have enough time to do the stuff that I'm already doing. Uh, but maybe. Maybe that'll be a thing that comes down the line. Um, uh, Sevi is awesome, Kayo. I agree. She's awesome. She's also evil. But, you know, you can be evil and awesome at the same time. That's fine. Um, so if you guys didn't watch the roadmap, you really should. There's a lot of content in there. there there's two sections of it. Um, it was a live stream. It's not terribly long. I think it's maybe an hour and a half total of content uh, between two two streams that uh, just goes over everything planned for Moonskull and Tabletop. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff in there and um, about what's coming down the road. So the stuff that I just told you about Werewolf was already mentioned in there. We give a better description of the campaign that Mike intends to run, including a bit of the plot. Um, we talk about what's going to happen with uh, Frostmaiden as it's coming to its close, because they are literally right next to the last dungeon of the whole campaign. So uh, that's coming very soon. And... Um, what follows? Uh, you heard in the stream today we mentioned uh, I may have made an error in judgment. I, I'm just, the jury's still out on that, but um, we are doing a campaign in the fall that's going to have a lot of familiar faces you see on here, plus one. Uh, so uh, there's going to be a Curse of the Crimson Throne Savage Pathfinder campaign, and I have been reading the lore on Corvosa and... Um, uh, Shavelix and or Shaviliax Sh and um, the surrounding region uh, for Pathfinder and uh, prepping for this campaign. It's going to be really good. I'm super excited for it. Uh, it's going to be our first full fledged Savage Pathfinder campaign that is actually in the arena that it's meant to be designed for uh, in the correct setting uh, with official content. And uh, it's going to be awesome. And the cast is going to have X Ray Girl and Savvy on one stream. I don't know how I got talked into this. I'm kind of regretting it, especially after today. That's the most fiendish I've seen X-Ray Girl in a long time. Man, I am just picturing her and Sevi's like fiendish sides feeding off each other. And I'm really stressed right now. Actually, I'm, I'm really stressed thinking about it. So maybe, maybe I'll reconsider. Maybe I'll reconsider. Uh, but regardless of how that goes down, the... Oh, God, it's going to be so bad. I know. X, X boys, it's going to be such a bad idea. I, I am like my stomach just dropped thinking about it, to be honest with you. But the campaign itself is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, God damn it, Chrysanth, I hate you. Um, 
it's gonna be a lot of fun so all that information's in there you'll also get you can hear about noelle's upcoming campaign and some of the plans for mummy's masks and things like that it's all in that roadmap uh you should go watch it it's worth it um you get a lot of uh, good nuggets of information in there. Wow, that word. I was looking for that word a minute ago. What was that word? I can't remember the topic that that word was related to. What did I need the word nuggets for? Damn it, I can't think of it. Um, I'm sure it'll come back to me eventually. Uh, it needs Sevi. Well, right now that's the plan, Brimstone. Right now that's the plan. Yes, Kayo, time and people and ability are important resources. And that is a struggle that we always have with this channel. Um, is having enough people, times, and resources to make all the extra things we want to happen happen. Even with the resources we have, keeping up with like the videos and stuff, has proven to be a challenge because people have real lives, they have jobs, and uh, this isn't their primary thing. Uh, so trying to keep that stuff consistent is already a challenge, and then adding more on top of that is is pretty rough. Um, I know it it really is a bad idea. It really, really is. Um, <laughs> God. Oh, oh, thank you, Michaela, for linking the roadmaps. Wow. Look at the queen shirt. Look how resourceful she was grabbing those links. I am so proud of queen shirt, Michaela. Good job, Michaela. I thank you for that. I was thinking that in my mind. I was like, man, I should get these links, but I was too lazy to do it. But you, queen shirt, you're on top of that. Good job. Thank you. Um... You think every game needs a heavy? I think I disagree. I disagree. It's funny because one of the books... Uh, I can't read your comment because the stupid little thing's in the way. Here, I'll just do a little period to get that up there. Oh, the main character's name is Sevi. Oh, interesting, interesting. Very cool. Well, I think that's all the time we got guys uh i really appreciate you and uh tuning in for episode 70 70 of the secrets of the frost maiden can you guys believe it's been 70 episodes holy shit this is a long running show guys we're not gonna hit 100 we're not gonna get there but damn we we might get to like 75 76 maybe even 78 depending on how long these guys stretch out what they're doing but damn uh, that is a long-running show, guys. And it's only possible because of you. Uh, I will talk to you guys later. And I'm going to get this ready next time so I don't do that thing at the end where I'm like, how do I do this? You guys make fun of me. There we go. Um, take it easy, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>